Yes, and so from the SEC, we have a couple of heads of department. And so Mr. Kalis, Ni Oman Badu, is head of department of legal. He's here with us. Sir, please give us a wave. Let's appreciate your presence. Put our hands together for him. Thank you. From SEC again, we have Mr. Francis Buedu, who is also head of department for broker dealers and adversaries department. Another head of department from SEC, Dr. Jacob Adu, HOD for issuers. Great. Away from that, we've got a representative from GCB Capital Limited, Mr. Kofi El Awuku and Mr. Bafu Jacob. Please, if you're here, give us a wave. Let's appreciate you. Thank you. And then, Executive Secretary of Ghana Securities Industries Association, GSIA, Madam Marianne Jani is also here with us. Thank you, Madam, and uh, thank you very much for deciding to spend your time with us tonight. Ama. I want to pick it up and also introduce these very important personalities. We have the Deputy Director General Finance, Mr. Paul Abebu. Please let's acknowledge him with a hand of applause. And then we also have the Deputy Director General Legal, Mrs. Deborah Mausi Ajimfra. We have the Director General of SEC, Reverend Daniel Ogami Tete. We also have the Regional Commander DCOP Ajiman. This gathering is special in many ways. We are very privileged to have the traditional leader of the great land that hosts us and that has nurtured us over the years, Nana Kobna Nketia V. Please let's welcome him. Let's acknowledge him especially. Nana, thank you. We appreciate your audience. And once again, we are very privileged to have the political leader the political head of this very prestigious region, Honorable Kwabna Oche Dako Mensa. And most importantly, we have you. Please let us appreciate each other for making the time to come here. Apart from the Q&A session, that's the question and answers, the work that you'll be doing this evening is to be clapping. So when I ask that you clap, you are going to do it heartily so that when it's time for you to ask your question, you do it with all the energy in you. Can you do it once again for ourselves? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so we begin the program and I want to take the opportunity to introduce a very, very special person. And this person is going to chair the affairs of this evening's gathering. He is a chairman for the occasion, and he is a traditional leader of this very famous land that has nurtured us over the years. Please indulge me to read a little bit of who he is. His name is Nana Kobna Nketia the fifth. Nana is also known in private life as Dr. Mason. And I'll tell you, he is the paramount chief of Esikado traditional area and the president of the traditional council. Nana attended basic education at Infantipim High School in Cape Coast, where I come from. And he obtained his first degree in modern history from the University of Ghana. He then obtained a doctor of philosophy in African history at the University of Calabar in Nigeria. His areas of special interest are in Pan-Africanism, African culture and religion, and governance, law, and philosophy. Nana has written a book titled, African Culture in Governance and Development, The Ghana Paradigm. He is a man of many colors, many shades, with very diverse experiences. Currently, the chair of the advisory committee of Care International Ghana, 
Chair of Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum Governing Council Board, Chair of Water Aid Ghana, Member of Western Region House of Chiefs, Member of National House of Chiefs, National Patron ATUU Festival, and Director of African Festival, that is the Panafest Foundation. Nana Kobnan Ketia V is also a renowned academic and one of the forward-looking leaders the country has ever had. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to listen to great men of substance in this land, and many of them cite him as the root of their knowledge, as a person who advised them to come back to Africa, because Africa can only be developed by Africans, and I hugely respect him for that. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with your help, please assist me to welcome our chairman, distinguished Nana Kobna Nketia, the fifth, the chairman for this evening's gathering. And without much ado, we'll take a very brief remarks from our chairman, Nana. Hmm. After listening to such beautiful English, I don't know what somebody from British Second D is going to say. Rabbi, thank you for all the wonderful adjectives. When I die, you should come and read my obituary. <laughs> I think we all want distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, I'm really, whatever thoughts I was having has really vanished when I was listening to the truths and half-truths about me. You know, but uh, when he says that I went to Fansom High School, it's not the Fansom High School, it's Fansom School. <laughs> and then secondly, uh, there's only one shade I am, and that is the black shade. I don't have any other shade. So when he says many shades, I'll never be another shade except black. <laughs> so, but on the more interesting side, uh, yesterday I was very fortunate to have received uh, the Exchange and Security Commission in my humble abode. I had a very, very fruitful discussion, and I promised them that I was going to be here. In fact, some of the remarks I made is that we deal with money, and with money, there's only one thing about it, integrity, truth, and honesty. Any other thing to do with money Forget it. And integrity, there must be absolute transparency. So in whatever we do, there must be transparency. Talking about investments, the number of Ghanaians who are falling for Ponzi schemes and so on and so forth tells you that we are interested in investment. We keep our money, we do this. There's so many ways that we, we want to invest. We want to be part of the investment system. But when you come across uh, things that harm you, then you know you're in trouble, you know? And I know that quite recently, we all, most of us, including myself, we fell victims to people who set up schemes and then the government came to wipe them away. And it was harrowing, it was a very harrowing experience, which then does something, a big damage to the country and to money. We don't have trust. Once you lose trust, you're gone. The Honorable Minister, when he was a very young man, was part of a team that we had at the regional office a long time ago to form the Western Investment Trust, WIT. Unfortunately, we didn't carry, but it tells you that we wanted to put all our resources together and for the Western region and then use it as a way of inviting other people to come and invest in this place. Somewhere along the line, I think the main leader of that idea, uh, Dr. J. Addison, you know, slipped out of the scene and that particular thing didn't continue. But it tells you that investment is not far from us. We are all in interested in investment. We invest in our children. If you want Bama, what's if you fear? What's what you So what's it to No, what you It's all investment. So how do you invest in Ghana and how do you get the trust of the people. Then sometimes they tell you, oh, we are in another era, it wouldn't be like before. But most of you go to church. 
and when I sit in church and suffer, so forgive me. When I sit in church and I hear the priest doing his rituals and he says, as it was in the beginning, it, it's now and ever shall be. Then I start smiling. <laughs> it won't be like this. But this is what has been going on. So what do we do to make sure that the institutions we have to protect us? One last thing. We are all Africans, as the lady said. We don't go to school, and the real African does not go to school for himself. He goes to school to uplift his society. And that's why villages come together and send somebody who is doing well to school. But unfortunately, we go to school and our minds turn around. And instead of going into what some of us refer to as the we-ism, we go into the I-ism, which of course our constitution preaches. You know? So why is the institution there? Is it for them or is it for the nation? Why do we govern? Is it for themselves or is it for the nation? Every office you occupy. So here, I feel very proud that one of the rare things that has happened in Ghana is to have the Security and Exchange Commission visit any region. We say that this is the wealthiest region in Ghana. And yet, this is one of the poorest regions in Ghana. It's something that you cannot put together. But yet, they are coming because the money comes from here. We all say 60% of the city is supported from the Western region. I could go on and on and on about this, but you all know these kind of statements. So the important thing is that we must have the integrity of our money. We must have the integrity of our investments. We must have trusts in the stock market and so on and so forth. But I'm really impressed, really, really impressed that this room is full. It just tells you that <laughs> all of us are interested in the economy of the country. When Nkrumah won independence and we became a republic, one thing that he said that we shouldn't forget, he says, now we've got the political thing. Now the most important thing for us to be independent is the economy. He said it in 1960 in his Republic Day speech. So here, we have them here, and part of the economy is investment and the integrity of the investments. I feel very proud to sit here to share, but don't believe all the things that the young lady said about me. If you want to know about me, come to this country. We'll drink palm wine together, then we'll talk about it. I take the chair, Mudasi. And don't you just love Nana Kovnanketia? Put your hands together one more time. Let's appreciate him. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we'll be taking a few presentations from the SEC. But before we get into that proper, we're going to take remarks from the, our special guest of honor. And this is a man that really needs no introduction in any part of the Western region. He's a full time MP for the people of the Takwadi constituency. And for the second time, he's serving as the regional minister of our very beloved region. I mean, he believes in the region and he believes fervently that if the private sector works, everybody in this country would do well. And so that is one thing that has marked his leadership so far in the Western region. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to present to you Dr. Kobna Ochreda Komensa to give his remarks. Hello. Thank you very much, Nana Chairman. I can see that this room don't like clapping. I'm not too sure. In fact, we were taught that uh, money don't like noise, so I thought that's the reason why you're not clapping. <laughs> Nana Chair, Mr. Obami, Director General, and Paul of Security and Exchange Commission. Your team, managers, managing directors here, invited guests and personalities, the media. I am particularly grateful that today we are having such a meeting 
with the Security and Exchange Commission. I do remember when I went to Parliament first in 2009, I had made it very clear that Ghana was developing like Koshoko. Only Accra was growing and the rest of the country was not growing. Which was true, because it's taken sec, I believe more than 20 years to decide to have this conversation outside Accra. And therefore, when I became the regional minister, I had the opportunity under the leadership of Nonado Danko Akufuado to become a regional minister. I felt that it was time to do all the things that we've talked about that was not happening around the rest of the country. And therefore, when the president boldly said that Ghana had to move beyond aid, I believe that then he has shifted the conversation to the economy. And I remember Nanan Katia one day saying that this whole business of Ghana beyond aid is such psychological warfare. And I agreed with him. I agreed with him because if we don't change our mindset, we can never change the economy of this country. Why am I saying so? The question I ask myself is, they've been Piram, they've been men's good, yet people are able to advertise for bad product, bad investment product, and Ghanaians still want to go and buy them. That is the reason why I do believe that this meeting is key to changing our orientation and giving us the insight and opportunities to know the good from the bad and the ugly. Nanache, our vision for Western region has always been to have a region that is a model for the rest of the country. And our plan is to work on this on three pillars. The first one is an entrepreneurial governance system that will bring in all the best talent in all the sectors to help the administration of the region go well. The second one is enterprise Western region. We want the private sector in the Western region grow. And we want Westerners to own the productive assets in the Western region so that we can keep the profit in Western region and grow Western region. And the last one is mainstreaming our youth who have the energy, the capacity, and the innovation to make things anew and prepare them forward. In doing so, we expect a region that is spatially balanced, an economy that is diversified, and everything that we do should be environmentally friendly. But all these things, like you're all aware, is about money. Money and money. And therefore, for us, seeing the SEC here is key to the development of these ideas that we have. Our plan is that we should be able to have a financial services center based in the Western region. That can be an alternative to what happens in Accra, because only Accra cannot be growing to make this country look like Koshoko. And therefore, we want to be working on these things with the Security and Exchange Commission. And we believe that in the next two to three years, the SEC will be able to set up an office that can take decisions in the Western region, here with us in the Western region. Because if we need money to expand, it cannot be one man's money. In fact, there's an account saying that says that, say, Nipa Bakun, Mea, a chrome in your day, and your day. And I'm a boy. And they say, Nipa P, me, no chrome in your day, and your day. It also means that when we want to develop the Western region, we need to pool our resources together. But you can't pull all our resources together if we don't have the necessary regulatory framework guided by the SEC to guide us to do these things. Because Johannesburg was not built with one person's money. 
the mines in Johannesburg was not built with one person's money. For the white boys, they were lucky. They could raise money on the stock exchange, bring them to Johannesburg, set up the factories and the mines, make the money and reinvest them in Johannesburg. By our own laws, if you are more than 50 people making a contribution to a project, you have to be regulated. It means that if we need new product to develop our region, we need a lot of you to come together to do it. And that means that we need the SEC to be part of it. It is for this reason why we believe that today's meeting with SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, will give us all the insights into how we can do some of these things in the Western region and do them differently so that we don't do them against the law, but we we'll do it within the laws of the land of Ghana. On that note, I'd like to thank you all for coming for such a beautiful program, and I believe that the Western region will be greater and stronger. Thank you very much, and may God bless us all. Honorable Lord Commenter, thank you very much for your insightful comment. Um, that also provokes a lot of thought for this gathering. I have reliably been informed that we have also been joined by a very important person, the Chief Director of the Western Region Coordinating Council, Mr. Frederick Ajiman. Sir, if you are here, you can give us a wave so we can duly acknowledge you. Thank you. Please let's appreciate him. You really wouldn't want us to talk about this clapping for the third time. You wouldn't want us to do that. Thank you, I appreciate it. We will take additional remarks from the Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Reverend Daniel Ogbami Tete. Let's welcome him, please. Thank you very much. Nana Chairman, Honorable Kwabna Ochre Daku Mensa, distinguished invited guests, the media, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll keep my remarks brief because I have my colleagues here uh, who will get into more detailed presentations. But I'd like to start by saying a big thank you to Nana Chairman and our Honorable Regional Minister for agreeing uh, to come and be part of this event, to stay with us and to share these valuable thoughts they have already put out. Uh, we are truly grateful for your time. So I want to ask and answer the question, why time with the SEC? Because we are here because of time with the SEC. I think both speakers have alluded to the fact that capital is key in every endeavor, especially um, if you look at it from the point of view of growing a nation and also dealing with uh, your financial issues at uh, your individual level. Now, any time you think about capital, we can always talk about short-term capital and then long-term capital. So capital is key. Short-term capital is good. But long-term capital is even better. And the place for long-term capital is the securities industry. Unfortunately, it is less understood. And um, sometimes people even feed or ride on that ignorance to scam people. So the idea for time with the SEC is to demystify what the securities industry is all about, what the capital market instruments or products uh, offer to individuals, uh, to families, uh, to companies, and to the nation, uh, as a whole, and that's why we have embarked on uh, this program to sustain 
investor education. You may be aware, and Anna Chairman alluded to it, that we've had um, a cleanup exercise in the financial sector, which included the securities industry. And one of the lessons, if you ask me, that we have learned from this exercise is the fact that the level of investor awareness, investor education, or knowledge of the uh, securities industry is unfortunately on the uh, low side. So the time with the SEC is one of the many initiatives that we have put in place to ensure that we keep the investing public informed and uh, aware of the securities industry and the opportunities that the securities uh, industry uh, offer. We believe that, for instance, companies, including the small and medium-sized enterprises, can tap into the securities industry uh, to raise capital, to expand their businesses, and by extension, create more jobs, and so on and so forth. We also believe that the securities industry offers opportunities for individuals uh, to not only save their money, but to put their savings to work. Because while saving your money is good, it's better to put your savings uh, to work. But of course, like Nana Chairman said, the issue is, do you have integrity? Do you have confidence? Do you trust the, um, the system that is there? And let me say that um, from the viewpoint of the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, we have taken the steps to beyond the cleanup exercise that we embarked on. We have taken the steps to strengthen the uh, industry. Uh, we have a lot of good market operators out there. Uh, we have come up with a number of initiatives. We have issued a number of guidelines uh, from corporate governance code for listed companies, conduct of business guidelines for our market operators, uh, investment uh, guidelines that give direction to the farm managers on what is allowed, what is permissible, and so on and so forth. We have issued licensing requirements which uh, introduces uh, more stringent measures to um, determine who is allowed to even get a chance to operate in the uh, securities uh, industry. We have recently launched the Capital Market Master Plan which provides the blueprint for the development of the securities industry in Ghana over the next 10 years, the first time we've had such a dedicated um, plan in place. Basically, I'm trying to say to you that um, we have taken steps to uh, make sure that the systems and the structures are there uh, to ensure that you and the many investors out there, potential investors out there, would have uh, confidence in the securities uh, industry. So before I resume my seat, let me say that uh, we have what it takes to leverage on the capital market, the securities industry, to achieve our goals, individual goals, family goals, uh, institutional goals, as well as the goals of the nation to achieve a Ghana beyond aid. So let's all seize the moment and if there's one thing that I would want to say before I take my seat, let me challenge all of us to understand that when it comes to uh, matters like uh, money matters, there's an element of taking personal responsibility. And I, 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 I salute all of you because by coming here, I believe it's a demonstration of you recognizing that you have a responsibility to inform yourself but not only today, let's always remember, when we are dealing with market operators, uh, let's make sure that we have, uh, we remember we have the personal responsibility. Let's get the right information that would help us inform our decisions. The SEC is committed to making sure that we'll facilitate your engagement with our market process, uh, our, our market operators. We have, uh, you know, designed a system of providing information on our website, and I can assure you that we are going to even deepen it to give you more access to information. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that the SEC believes we have what it takes to help you. My colleagues will give you more detailed presentations. So, thank you for coming, and thank you for your attention.
Now, uh, after the lectures about the clapping, I was hoping it was going to be better. Let's do this one more time for Reverend Ogwami Tete. And Nana Chairman, with your permission, Oya is a fantastic perform kaka. Demo beya obi obi asu beya nechefa na ozakofie. But answer your boko yenyi men the main fa. Let's recognize the presence of NPRA once we waha. Please, Yemma. Yes, let's put our hands together for them. We also have reps from BOG Bank of Ghana once we waha. Great. Now answer your boko into the presentation proper. Ete Reverend Ogbami Tete, Oshansen, it's a very simple question. Nasu Kodo, or try to obey the means and be sanano. Also, Dainty and a SEC, what to announce it from Enken, Waba Second D, Takradi, Ning and Bay Engage. That is the question now, or try to obey answer. And Ninya, I don't know what he's trying to point out basically in the SEC, Jen Amanfu in our own. Of course, the Yimper Bay, or dear Mexican, you had to catch a baby more or age mama hen. But here's a catch a baby, you know. Or your baby akeke, baby a butu mwa bohen, inti o si dupi. De ye dis kan keshe baby a ya sumpo ya wa responsibility. O de ya bo share baby a zisike keshe asu obe ye ye amehen na na. And we zikan so akede answer ne befi kan presentation so obe ingna be chayen yen responsibility ma si si mwa odo ye so that obe a no button yen ti koka koka ukromha from in the record. And talking about presentations. Nana Chairman, with your permission, we'll take the very first presentation uh, that will be focusing on the overview of the industry and capital raising. To do that for us, let's put our hands together to welcome Dr. Jacob Adu. <laughs> now, until Doc gets here, we are not stopping clapping. Let's put our hands together. <laughs> let's do it better till Doc. Take the podium. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. All other protocols observed. So, I'm to give a brief overview of the capital market industry and fundraising. See, the law that set up SEC was enacted in 1993, that is PNDC Law 3, now repealed by Act 929, 2016. SEC actually started operation in 1998 as part of Bank of Ghana, even though the law was passed five years earlier, until 1999-2000 when the commission was properly constituted to be independent as you see here today. And the mandate of the SEC is to ensure that the capital market develops efficiently and also in a transparent manner where the integrity of the market and the investors themselves will feel protected. Now, the capital market, what it is? See, a market is a place where people meet to buy and sell. And so the capital market is, is a specialized market, just as we have year market, onion market. If I'm in Accra, I want to go and buy onion, I know where to go. Yam, I know where to go. But if I want to buy money or to sell money, where do I go? So the capital market is, is, is an arrangement, it's a market where long-term funds are bought and sold if a business person wants to raise money to do some activity, or government wants to raise some money, capital, to do an activity. That is the place to go. And that is what, actually, the economy needs to fund its operations and to develop. The factories we see around, they all have raised money to do their businesses. Government raised money many times, often, in this country. You've heard about ESLA. You've heard about Get Fund, Dachi, PLC. They've all come to the market to raise long-term capital to do other activities. And the monies that are used to, to pay for or to give to these people who want to do businesses are provided by institutions such as pension funds, insurance companies, we have others we call collective investment schemes, and even individuals such as you and I. You can buy shares on the stock exchange. In so doing, you become part owner of a business. You can buy government bonds. 
in so doing, you are providing loans to government, and you will receive your dividend or interest at the end of that period. And even as you do so, as you help the businessman or government to, to, to run their businesses, you are also receiving dividends and interest. That also goes to help you secure your own financial security as time goes on. Let's move on, please. So just as you have the capital market as the long-term end of, the, of, of that fundraising market, you have the money market where short-term funds are bought and sold. So if you invest in tables, you're operating in the money market. If you do a fixed deposit in the bank, you operate in the money market because it is a short-term investment product, you see. So that is what actually happens. So the money market, even though SEC does not regulate the money market specifically, we have mutual funds, mutual funds that actually buy instruments that belongs to the, the, the money market. And so let's, let's move on. One thing about money market is that it is short term. Your, I mean, safety of your investment is, is always assured. The risk is low. And so the return is also low, you see. But also when we're taking, I mean, higher risk, you also have to make sure it is not just for the sake of higher return, but it is also safe and the risk is actually a calculated one. Let's, let, let's move on. If you come to the capital market, we have two aspects of it. You have the primary market, you have the secondary market. The primary market is where companies or governments come to raise money for the first time. So in the money market, sorry, in the primary market, the funds that are raised go to the company or government to use that money for its business. And it can be shares or bonds, you see. And in this case, as I said, the proceeds go to finance the business. But if you come to the secondary market, like the stock exchange, the screen market is the stock exchange where shares and bonds that have already been issued are bought and sold. So that if you are a company and you come to the product market and you raise the capital, if I bought some of your shares and now I want to get out of your company, I don't come to you, I don't come to you as the owner of the company and say, I want my money. No. I have to go to the secret market and sell. Do you see? So somebody else will buy and take my place in your business. That is why businesses in the advanced world and here, I mean, exist way, way beyond the founders have died. Because nobody goes back to the owner and says, I want my money back. No. You want money that you've already used to purchase shares, you go to the secondary market and you sell your shares and you get out and the person takes your place. And that does not affect the cash flow or the capital of, of, of the business. Let's continue. And this, this slide actually tells us the kind of participants we have in the capital market. As I mentioned, the stock exchange is there. In fact, now we have also a smaller exchange that we call alternative stock market, where smaller companies, startups, can come and raise funds. In fact, you can raise as low as 250,000 Ghana cities on that market. And you need as many as just 20 shareholders and this is where we encourage a lot of the AGI members and the Ghana Chamber of uh, Industries members to take advantage of. We already have about six companies on this, that smaller market. And whenever the GNCCI, they are ready, the regional branch, when you are ready here and you invite us, we are ready to come and give you a customized presentation that we can go into further details as to how you can raise market or money on the, on the Ghana alternative market. You have investment advisors and broker dealers. These are people who will guide you as a company to come to the market and raise the kind of money that you need. The issuers, of course, are the companies who come to raise the money. And you have investors who put their money into your business. They could be institutions, they could be individuals, and what have you. Now, when people have come to raise money, or when people have given their monies to government and businesses, it does not end there. 
Or it is not also anybody at all who comes there and says, I want to raise money from the market. No. Those intermediaries that I mentioned as participants, they are people who are licensed to do that business that we want them to do. So we want to be assured that their integrity is up there and that when they come to work with you, they're going to serve you, I mean, very well, fairly, and, and, and in, the, in, the, in the most appropriate manner. We also license collective investment schemes. Sometimes you don't have too big a money to invest. Collective investment schemes are, are pool funds, are funds that accept monies bit by bit from masses and invest on their behalf. Because you as an individual may not be able to employ a farm manager to manage your funds for you. If the amounts are pooled, there is this professional farm manager who manages the fund on behalf of the masses. And at the end of the period, you get your, 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 your fund contribution growing or you get dividend for that. Approve us. This is the way we regulate the, 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 the market. People who come to raise capital have to submit certain documents that SEC has to go through and make sure they are correct before they come. When they come, they also submit periodic financial statements to both the shareholders and the SEC to make sure they are accounting for their stewardship to the people who give them the money. And so the owners of the businesses are held accountable for the money that they come to collect. If there are problems, SEC has to find or finds ways and means to deal with them. Enforcement, if they go wrong, SEC can impose penalties on them, you can suspend them, you can revoke the license we have given you so that you go back to where you came from. We can also disqualify you based on your conduct. We will tell you, please, don't come in the capital market again because your character is not the one or the, the, those that we like to see on the market. These are details of the, the, the participants or the intermediaries. Farm managers are there. Just to tell you that we have a lot of professionals in the market who can assist anyone at any point in time. And you can find them on our website as well. Let's proceed. This is, is a snapshot of, of the stock exchange. As at August 2021, money that has been raised on our stock exchange is about 62 billion Ghana cities. And as at August, between, be, be, from January to August, People who invested in the stock exchange, on the average, on the average, might have earned 41% of whatever investment they had made. Some could be higher and some lower, but on the average, 41% for this year. Even though some, last year it was what? Negative 13. It means if you had put money in the stock exchange last year, you would have lost 13% on the average of whatever you put in. But that also depends upon the kind of companies that you invest in. Let's, let, let's proceed. This is, this is almost the same as the one we talked about. Fine. Let's talk briefly about asset management industry. This is, you have pension funds, you have credit investment schemes, you have other funds. So you have what we call the fund managers, people who manage people's money on their behalf. And we have some who manage pension funds. You know, Ghana now you have three-tier pension scheme where monies are put aside for the future when you are unable to work, then you go and, and make use of them. The MPRA is in charge of pensions, but the managers who manage the funds are under SEC. And so we work with, with pension industry, the pension regulator to, to do that. CIS is collective investment schemes, that is pool funds, where monies are collected from individuals, no matter what the amount. And professional managers manage the pool and members of the fund of the years of the scheme get their, their due benefits as time goes. And there are others. We have very big people who have a lot of money and they can engage a family directly that have millions. Please manage on my behalf. Those are part of other funds. We used to have more farm managers, but you heard in 2019 we revoked about 53 of them. So now you have eight or six farm managers. The list is on our website. And so you can always go there. Let me spend a few minutes to talk about the fundraising 
uh, or capitalizing aspect of, of, of our business. We have the capital market in the middle. And I said, it's a market. In any market, we buy and we sell. So in the capital market, we have two groups of people. People who have money, which we call investors. They are in the blue right. And you have issuers, people or the companies who want to raise money. You know, they all go through intermediaries and get to the capital market. Now, the issuer, if you look at the back, the issuer must be a public company. In Ghana, we have private companies and public companies. If you want the public, the general public, to, to, to buy your shares, to become part of the company, then you have to be a public company where shares can be transferred. If you're not public, it is difficult for somebody to take the shares of another person in case the person wants to leave the company. But for public, you will be listed. And so if somebody wants to get out, it's a matter of going to the market and selling. And before you come here too, you must be a company that has a well-organized board. You see, it is not only trying to get your friends, whether they have the competence or not on the board. No, somebody's come to put his money in your business. He wants to be sure the people in charge of the company are people of high integrity, of people who have the competence, people who they believe can get them the returns. So you need to make sure you don't only call your, your friends, your relatives. No, look for people who can help you build your company. Because if your company do not make profit, or does not make profit, it will not be attractive for people to continue to keep their money in your business. Plus, less than capitalization, as I said, in the smaller market, you can come and raise as low as 250,000. And you need as low as 20 shareholders. The bigger one, you need 50 or 100. And that one, you can raise a minimum of 1 million. So if you're not too big, you will use the Ghana alternative market. If you are big, you will use the, the, the main stock exchange. For the big market, the main, main stock exchange, you, you must have some prior existence. You should have been in, in operation for at least five years, three, five years. But with the GACs, the smaller market, you may be a startup. So long as you can show the potential of making profit, and the investors actually be, will believe in whatever you are saying, you can come there. So when you qualify, then you issue what you call prospectus. I think that is the blue document there. That document comes to SEC. SEC looks at it. In that document, we make sure the reason for which you are coming for the money is, is shown in that document. Your directors, every information about you is there. And the investors will read that document. They will read your history. They will read your projections. And based on that information, they will decide whether to be part of your company or not. So if the investors who are made up of pension funds, private equity, retail individuals, SNITs, and other people who have money, if they read your prospectus, the blue document there, and they feel that your proposal to them is good, then they can give you the money, sit back, and wait for their returns. Now, after they've invested, you have to also be issuing financial statements. And that is the, the document, just uh, an annual report, financial report, I think the first document on my left there. Periodically, quarterly, and annually, every company will have to issue this financial report to the shareholders so that they know what is going on in that company. And annually, holding returns. People want their monies to grow. So if you have worked with my money, then you have to pay me dividends when you have made profit. If you have listed or you are listed, sometimes investors don't only get dividend. They also get what we sometimes call capital gains. The price of the shares can increase on the market. And so sometimes you may not be paying dividend, but if the company is doing so well, the value of the company increases. And so anytime you want to sell your shares, you get some money in addition to the price that you paid for. 
So in brief, in brief, this is the capital raising structure. And the intermediaries that I showed you are always available to guide companies that want to raise funds. And the SEC at the top there supervises whatever is done, whatever document that is issued here, SEC will have to pass it before it comes to the public. And uh, I think I will want to stop here. My time is up. And then if there are questions, we will attend to them. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Edu, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 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 Yaka de saw ye kawa, no ye kaw. And to Nina, no chatter, when you men in Nina, or the watch out for Nina, I must so be a rock on one website and a woman more the whole. Now, will be a rancher, man trend. No, say ye come money market and so, or ye baby a yedzi, see Kugwa. Now, say ye could go my no chatter, Yaroton, another Yaroto. And say money market and either the Yaroton, baby or this come for so, Baba, and I do be a tree if you ho. Now, Ne kasemun oze tu gade se yesha money market ne ye baby a abanum poko hono tu mukedi gua oji sika e jumekuwa kasa kasen once woko hono wukedi gua na woji sika na wodi digua ne wenyi mfaso na kamwa na wodi woni sika wodi ye juman ye yonu ifu ya fro bibi money market o ye sika gum. Sika go mu hon no ye treasury bills and other T bills and ning narrow wo. No so a hon a wo investment in on shada rancher on a sabusume basa, busume basa, no wisika ya cradu, no was asha win sim. A hon on su sikano o wodze nemum on wobe bre o sunday wudi wisika koshawa etawa busume basa ne kwe yuadi. N tisika no so anadam fasunu soba banika krebi. Na ye yon if you wa mum o ye nyu day. Also, uh, safety or not, a day, sir. It's a whisker caught to her, a bottom na quadda. A bottom na quadda in him that will bosher de ye. No, I'm the bottom my quadda in two sinner, and fashion also on Dawson, na regional, na erdano, nor the infasherba, nor son of Sucker BB fan alternative stock market. A way a brebia or ye juma kunkatin katin, and one so walk a ho, not walk a jisica, or your fan raising, what jisica. Now, what's the human in Juma? Yeah, you know, so if you are investment advisors, na broke uh, brokers, and other dealers, the microphone, no, I said, the CKB will work on your name, you know, one could able to make a number. A binum of wise, the boss may be num, the one friend, the grandma, on your demon coffee, or can't far, or can suffer regulatory approach, no, I said, the money market, the capital market, the one anum, no, what shall do, or can suffer one now, one man crater. Okasa fa unwana sabi wo wa ma pen wa jitumi de nyo botu ma kodo na ye juma na okasa fa unwana unwana so wa ye de watchman supervisors watena ho na wore she e juma no do ro kweye ana do nkweye okasa fa fund managers eh nko fa unwana so sika na wadanda no no ze mfa soba wa nkweye so na ye kawa na mbom eh ye yo no si for your pension fund managers no can CIS and no says say yes. Ghana, you know capital market and you will be a fund managers and you will what you be a do you watch a senior no Ghana had a na a fee ye 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 found one on so bring you from one issue not today it could tell what company no na company no per day a boy do na a ye a you make work a sack a see Zinkomo, I see another one you want to go. Them issue one or do your company be a or your public company? No, chade Ghana ban another penny info another crater moon ye ni moon. So ye you only see for us or do onya and penny info sabi what day you manana ye ni na ye ni mde. Eh, when you see why you organized, 
Yenda wo hwa kra ta bia na wo hu. Obi anyi bebi ozi ne pen ozi tre. Ona nye organize na yerkan. No order wo ye nkrofo bi so a se nye ho na rebo ma nye ho na ye adwuma. Wan ka se bo tumezi won se se obu na aka da wo boboa na ye nyamfa so. O sende company no so o nyamfa so a na nkrofo wo ze won sika wo ze baba be shim. Na fe so da me company no do obo modin na afibia ra no bo nyi so de anwa reports ze ba. Da me report na obe chere de ye nyamfa so anada ye reboka Another baby, a year, Jenna, a running, and say, Mosi to Gran Cacrana Mazar to Gunna, you know, Bobinson, Mamma, will be around Bosa. Thank you. So, um, we are going to take the other set of presentation, and this is on Understanding the Sick by Mr. Paul Abebio. Please let's invite him with a hand of applause. Thank you, thank you. Um, Nana Chairman, Honorable Minister, um, Director General for SEC, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Permit me to stand on the precedent. I will spend a bit of time talking about SEC. Um, and it's interesting that we are here because um, what we do covers the whole nation. We are based in Accra, but the activities we do, we've had interactions with some of you. Uh, some people have come to our offices for meetings. Um, and part of our strategic direction is to look at how we reach a bigger audience, how we reach further into Ghana. So I'll give a bit about what we do. Um, and then my colleagues will also go into more detail around that. So, as we mentioned, SEC is the regulator of Ghana's capital markets. Over the past few years, we've taken a number of steps to change how we operate, uh, which is also what has brought us here. As you see, we're also changing. It wasn't, we're not doing what we were doing 10 years ago. We've changed. That's how come we are here. We are increasing our human resource base. Uh, when we started, we were very small. Uh, we lost some people along the way. Uh, but Two years ago, we were around 50 people, 54, 55. Now we are 70 people, so we are expanding. We are also digitizing our operations. So those of you who started interacting with us, you are seeing us online more often. Internally, the regulatory activities that my colleague mentioned, we are now transferring it from paper-based to online-based. Because in the digital age, even to reach more people, you have to have an online presence that is effective and structured well. We've also introduced new guidelines. We mentioned Act 929, which was passed in 2016. The new guidelines helps to expand on the other requirements within the Act. And then we developed and launched a capital market master plan. Um, we have our own vision as an organization. So we, we wake up every morning, we know we have to supervise, we have to help the market develop. But as a segment, what is the overall vision? And what we did was that we worked with industry operators to come up with a vision statement for the capital markets. And that is to have a diversified, deep, and efficient, and well-regulated capital market that is attractive to both domestic and foreign investors. There are four pillars on that, and I'll talk about that briefly when I talk about the strategy. So as a regulator, uh, we are here in Ghana but we are part of an international organization of regulators called IOSCO, which is the International Organization of Securities Commissioners. One might say, what did I study in school to become a regulator? They didn't teach me this job in school. I studied economics and French. But as a regulator, ideally, we need to understand how finance works. We need to understand a bit of accounting, a bit of law, um, and it's also from practice. Right, so from just the practice of supervision, uh, which in itself is a different task. So what happens is that if we want to learn more, we have to interact with other people who are doing the same thing in other jurisdictions. And then Ghana is also what we call, want to be a financial hub. So if you want to say that you want um, Goldman Sachs to come and set up in Ghana, they'll ask, why should I come to Ghana versus Hong Kong? 
Then you have to say, okay, Ghana, we have this and this that differentiates us. We have similar characteristics. And so we are attractive. We have companies who are also here who are vibrant. So we compare notes in other jurisdictions. IOSCO has three main objectives. Investor protection, ensuring the markets are fair, efficient, and transparent, and then reducing systemic risk. So these objectives we have also adopted for ourselves. So we talked about our mandate. So as a commission, we are seeking to ensure that there's an orderly growth and development of an efficient, fair, and transparent securities market. We also have our own vision, I mentioned earlier on, and that is to be a top-tier securities market regulator in Africa. So while we are in Ghana, as I mentioned, if you want to raise money, not only do you need people in the Western region to help you, you need people from other regions, and you need people from other countries in Africa. Now, if they're coming to Africa and they're coming to invest in your company, they'll ask, who regulates you? And if there's a dispute, who do I talk to? And is that person of a caliber that I can respect anywhere in the world? And that is where we want to go as SEC in Ghana. So this interaction we're having with you, what matters is that Ghanaians need to understand what we do so they can appreciate it and act accordingly. And we can also have a bigger and more vibrant market. But when we become more attractive, other people also come and join us in our market. Now to do this, um, we, we have also defined a mission, which is to regulate, innovate, and promote the growth and development of a fair and transparent securities market. We have four main values that we work with, which is team spirit. So you see a team here. It's not just DG who came. He brought us along to, to support him and to work together as a team. We are also working with respect. So we try and respect ourselves internally. We also respect our customers, our regulatees, and the, the people who serve them as well. And we're also trying to be innovative. Now, people think of technology only as innovation, but I think coming to Takarad is an innovation in and of itself. We're also innovating how we operate. And then we talk about commitment, so being committed to the tasks that we do. How are we structured? Um, we have a board we call the commission. So when we say security change commission, the commissioners are the governance framework. So the commission has 11 members um, and is divided into four committees. So we have an approvals and licensing committee. We have an administrative hearing committee, which deals with disputes. Then we have a finance and administration committee. Until this year, we had a property committee, but we have absorbed it into the finance and admin committee and created a, a regulatory reforms committee. As you've seen, SEC has been very active these days. So if we are coming up with new solutions, new structures, it is important that the board also has a subset that pays attention to this emerging area. Um, so that's that. In terms of our internal structure, we have the director general, who is our, our, our head, and then we have two deputies, myself and my colleague, Mrs. Ajemfran. Um, and under that, we have the Exchanges and Markets Department. They handle the Ghana Stock Exchange and the other service providers. We do have two exchanges in Ghana. There's a stock exchange that deals in equities, which is shares in companies. And then we have the Ghana Fixed Income Market. And I think he mentioned it as well. They deal with bonds. So in as much as you want to raise capital, you can either do equities for the public, or if you want to borrow, you can do a bond um, where you take the money and you say, I'll pay back in five years' time. But every six months or so, you pay interest. That bond can also be listed and trade. And a good example is if you go to a bank now um, for a fixed deposit, and you give them your money. When you need your money, you have to go back to that same bank for your money back. On the fixed income market, when you put your money there and you want your money back, you can trade it. So you don't have to go back to the same issuer. Even government of Ghana has this bond. All the treasury bills and treasury bonds are on the fixed income market now as we speak. And so they trade. People buy and sell bonds every day. And the volume is around 140 billion CDs um, a year. If you think about that, that is truly significant. Um, okay. So in terms of departments, you have HR and admin, 
policy research and IT, legal and enforcement. Then under myself, we have the finance department, issuers, fund managers, and then broker dealers. Then we have the director, office of the director general, where you have communications, the team that put together this event, and we have international relations and the company secretary. Then we also have audit and risk, uh, which reports into the director general, but has a dotted line into the board as well. In terms of people, um, we have 68 full-time employees, um, and then we have eight contract staff. Our gender balance, we tend to have more males than females, but we are working to find parity there as well. I've talked about the broad functions we do, but one might say, how do we actually do this? So we, we have the function of regulating the market. That is one element of it. So we develop and we implement acts and guidelines. Then we also advise the minister on policy initiatives. So the master plan we developed is not just for SEC. It is for the government. Every year when they're doing a budget, it's not like we start from scratch and say, oh, we don't know what you're doing. We're now come to start. Now we have a long-term plan. So every year we're doing the budget, we say, okay, what has been happening in the capital market? Where do we go from where we stand? We also help with financial stability. So the bailout we did is a good example of helping to stabilize the market. But we also take certain activities. Um, we may always announce that when we see certain activities, we also engage the law enforcement agencies to ensure that we don't get too much chaos in the market. Then we help with market development, uh, which is to say that we come up with some new products. When people approach us with products, we have to study it and come out with the enabling environment for the product to succeed. And then we also engage in investor protection. Um, how we are tackling that is to explore and do an investor protection fund, but we are also doing investor education these days. So you are hearing more of SEC. We are educating people about what we do, the different instruments available, the risks that that entails. Um, and this is something we committed to do. We've been doing it for the past two years. We're going to continue it uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, my colleague talked about the regulation, so I won't spend too much time on that. Um, on terms of advice, to I think we understand that. So let's go to the, um, the slide on market, market development. So I mentioned that we do create the environment for an orderly development. So sometimes when we do guidelines, it has different pathways. One might say, okay, I have a product, but I don't see SEC offering it. How do you go about it? And we say, write to the commission, tell us your idea, then we'll come, then we'll set up a, an inquiry or a study. So sometimes some of the ideas come from internal views. Sometimes we get ideas from the market. Then we draft what we call guidelines. When we do the guidelines, we put them on our website. So now if you go on our website, we have guidelines we have issued, and we have draft guidelines, which are things that we are still working on. And when we put the draft out there, we're inviting the public. As we said, SEC is not just for SEC. It is for Ghana, and it's not for Accra only. Everybody in Ghana can go on our website, see the drafts we are working on, and even comment on it. You can write to us and say, I saw this draft you are doing. I think you should change this, change that, do this, do that. Because as a regulator, we regulate a market. The worst thing is to do a product and nobody takes it up. You see, so we are keen to have that interaction. And what we do sometimes when we do the draft, we even call it stakeholder engagement. And then we interact with the stakeholders um, to do it. Now, because of, of COVID, we are doing those, some of those engagements virtually. So we can have Tagradi also participate in some of these engagements. Now, the, we work in an ecosystem locally. So we've mentioned some of the key people we interact with. We have the Ghana Securities Industry Association, who is here with us this evening. We have the Ghana Stock Exchange. We have the Central Securities Depository. So after you buy your shares on the exchange, there's an organization called the CSD. They hold the actual shares. So that if a fire falls in your house, it doesn't mean you've lost your shares. Your shares are still there. You see, if you pass away and you have a will, or you don't have a will, letter of administration can be sent to CSD and say that my father or my son or my daughter had shares. Can you tell me? Because this is the assets we have. Then they can transfer it into the, the relevant beneficiary's name. And that helps to make it secure, as we've talked about. I mentioned the Ghana Commodity Exchange. 
and then the Bank of Ghana and the other regulators we work with. There are also other service providers we deal with. We deal with accountants, auditors, lawyers, valuation experts, consultants, software providers. So when you engage these people for your business, when you're thinking of raising money and you want to repair your accounts, ask them, what do you know about SEC? How can I raise money in the capital market? If they cannot answer all these questions, you have to advise yourself. Because you are paying them a fee because you're supposed to be knowledgeable. They should understand some of these things that you may not be an expert on, you see. So part of the service they provide is to give you insight into these other areas. We've talked about the various markets we regulate, so I'll skip that. And then in terms of our strategic intent, we have three main pillars. We are focusing on education, so building capacity in our staff, building capacity of the market, and then building capacity of the investing public. And that is also what brings us here, to educate people in a detailed way. As I said, we didn't learn this in school. Some of us learned it when we were put on the seat. So you sitting here, you should also be able to understand at least a little bit. Then you can advise yourself going forward. They also look at enforcement. You see, Ghana, we have very good laws. People come and study our laws. But applying it is also where we need to improve. So we are focused on employment and enforcement, and that helps with confidence. When we act, people know that, okay, SEC is there. If there's trouble, they'll take action. Then we have talked about market development. So there we look at products, but we're also looking at technology. How do we improve service delivery? Not just by the regulator, but by the market. If people bring us solutions that are technology-based, we have to enable that as well. Um, on a high-level basis, some of the regulatory reforms we've brought in the past four to five years include corporate governance code for listed companies. We've issued new licensing guidelines. We've done a draft of financial resources requirements. And then we've also issued conduct of business guidelines for market operators. Um, I mentioned the commodity exchange. It wasn't there before. While we trade commodities, we didn't have a platform for, for trading it locally. So now we have a, a, a platform that is available. So I think with that, I will bring my submissions to an end. Um, when we, as we go through all this, we want to see SEC as a regulator enhanced. So having Nana on our platform, having Honorable Minister on our platform also speaks well of us, and that is part of the strategy. We want to see liquidity improving, and I want to have new products on the market as well. So I want to thank you for your time. Um, I think there'll be questions and answer section. We can address your questions during that period. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul Abibio. In the demo, I'm a year and master maybe. May I attempt the more bonnet tougher war of phantom? Mr. Paul Abibio, by Ninsam Care, no, no, Jina, Miss Mayabetti, SEC, and I sec, Juma Wozen. I say, Papa, at the moment, no chair and the SEC were one can, but on in Cheddar and Canipen was one Juma, was one was one Juma were gone and now funding in Nara. On a dance, you know, you want to make the no one narrow it down to capital market or yes, you can go a one and one watch the one Juma war away from that. I say, echo SEC, CCR, Nimpa 70 in the Isa way, Juma war. When you are breaking it down as a man, here, a chair in there, since you are being for the world also power, and to say, be sinners or corner, they be no ACC, I'm a watch, or do see you bear, you are nation one day, Chiho. You never know, if you are not, are you fortunate? Embra or someone, my woman is the one to manage your act 929, 2016, as them embrace Obobo Oboto as I was is the one to manage. On our chair on Miss Ma SEC Buffado, by one of Juma, Ubo to Maya de Ye, Zambua, Yeninara, or Sansu City Pide, Sir Eb Africa, ha, SEC, Ne, in the Dog Nida Ubutum, why a regulator African in Ebonizina on the Obobio, Papa, or chair and Miss Ma CCR, SEC, Ne Governance and Otte, or check the Minister of Finance, no share, Jumizin, Ninado, or one commission members, or why a Dubiaco. 11 commission members. Boom, perform chain department. Nibi, there were HR, there were exchanges and market policy on your research on your IT phone. 
and I finance issue as well, fund managers as well, and some of broker dealers, no any advisories. On also, woha wabwa SEC jumanu ma utum kone yin papa apa. On and then channel, or chayen jumezi functions are SEC. Wozi, ni mu teacher yin there, was support market development. Ebia in their co investment market and a capital market now. Ebia, a bibia unyi market no de da ono. Uh, will be what SEC wanna say only at the margin, no, but they develop new, you know, product Zaba market, no, that was what one. Why in the Musu we are, what the guidelines to one website, them more be ya, will be able to make cooking can be, none so what to say to no for. Or some of the chain stakeholders are in the SEC, or in all this Zijuma, Ghana Securities Industry Association, Kahumbi, Ghana Stock Exchange, Kahum, the Marsuna Central Security Depository, Kahumbi, Bank of Ghana. Kahun G C X Kahun and a NPRA or your National Pensions Regulatory Authority. No se kahun. Away from that, and yin pa kubia SEC on so what boy one jumazin or s accountants kahun auditors lawyer for kahun software providers consultant valuation expert century and for there's a kafa lawyer be an auditor be don't boche no which one koda bisen the SEC won't you mana wayano or tasa. On Tasa, a Kuwaim Nakafa in Pofra, Botum, Wabu, Damokwanado. In Timor Bonatofa, in Zambia, Mr. Paul Edu Keno, and Amabo Netofan. Paul Abebu, one friend, Tim. Masumaya Dibiana. All right, Yenri, basically, I'm going to catch you the Yenri, your budget presentation. See, if you have a con, now you have to say properly. Juma SEC was the one in capital market name. Now, I suppose you can't be able to be a born one. Emma, while born in a few more presentations. But I am one day, I saw no yard door so pee in a better day. Yen could add the name tea. I want to know about Kumha, the intermediate Jumezi, no home for Suye. Now, the next presentation is going to be done by Mr. Carlos Bedu, also a head of department from SEC, and he will be presenting to us on regulatory frameworks, tools and enforcement powers. Let's put our hands together, ladies and gentlemen, to receive Mr. Carlos Bedu. I think we can do better than that. Good evening. I think you can clap better. Uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and do it very quickly because I know you are all getting tired. I think the first thing we have to note is the reason why we are here. Like my Deputy Director General said, uh, the SEC Ghana belongs to an international organization called the International Organizations of Securities Commissions, which is IUSCO. Now, IUSCO is the standard setting body for all securities uh, industry regulators in the world. Now, IUSCO has three core objectives. The very first one is investor education. That is why we are here. Because we believe that when you educate the investor, you give him power and he's able to make informed choices. So we are here to fulfill an international obligation. Apart from that, IOSCO has 38 principles. Principles 1, 30, and 14 also insist that all security industry regulators should create platforms for sharing information with the investors so that the investors can be armed in making uh, informed decisions. Apart from that, our own act, section two, also insists that we should do investor protection. And to do investor protection, you need to educate the investor. So that is why we have this forum. Now, aside that, section 208 of our act also says that once in a while, we should go out and disseminate information to the public. Because again, if you want to protect the investor, the investor needs education. Now, finally, my Deputy Director General also mentioned that we launched our Capital Market Master Plan on 24th May 2021. Now, Pillar 4 says that we should have a strong regulatory framework and solid investor protection base. So we are here to fulfill both international obligations and also local legal obligations. So what I'm going to do is to give you the tools that we have, that we use in our market to be able to protect you when things go wrong. 
Now, the first law that we have that we use in our market is the Securities Industry Act 929. That's the act that was passed in 2016. Now, what this act does is that it creates the types of licenses that the SEC must regulate. So if you hear something like securities exchanges, commodities exchange, clearing and settlement institutions, credit rating agencies, fund managers, investment advisors, unit trusts, mutual funds, hedge funds, private equity funds, venture capital trusts, nominees, underwriters, issuers, registrar, custodians, primary dealers, trustees, broker dealers, these are all our licensees. So if you find that they are misbehaving anywhere, please use the telephone number that they have given to you to reach us on that. Now, aside that, we also have other types of pieces of legislation that we use. We have the Securities and Exchange Commission regulations, which actually breaks down the main act, which is the framework that we use in working. Now, what these regulations do is that they give you the criteria for coming into the market. Whether you are coming in as a licensee or you are coming in as, a, as a director or you are coming in as a CEO, there are minimum standards that you have to meet. And if you are able to meet it, then we can be sure that if you are serving our investors, they can be protected. We also have the unit trust and the mutual funds regulations. Like has been mentioned, we have some type of investment that we call collective investment schemes. These are schemes that pull funds from different sources, from retail investors, because some of these investors do not have that much to be able to buy shares directly on the stock market. So they help pool the resources, and then they share the profits whenever there are returns. So we have this LI 1728, no, 1695, which also gives the framework under which these institutions operate. Then sometimes you have companies within the market who want to take over another company because the other company is weak. That's the target company. It needs capital injection. Sometimes they want to pull energies together, so they want to merge. Sometimes it's an acquisition. I want to buy you because you cannot survive, and I can put money in you. Once those public companies are public companies, then they must come within the regulation of the SEC. So we have another law for that. That is the SEC code on takeovers and measures. Then we have compliance manual for broker dealers and other licenses of the SECs. Now, this manual is like a handbook for all our market operators. There are professional standards that are meant, that have been put in the uh, manual, so that if you flout them, then you are likely to have consequences. So even those who work in the market have rules, you know, like code of ethics, that they also work with. Then recently, we issued the Securities Industry Licensing Guidelines. These guidelines help tell us what you require to obtain a license. So all the, the, the types of licenses that I mentioned, if you need to acquire one of those licenses, you need to look at the Securities Industry uh, Licensing Guidelines to be able to know what documents you need to submit to be able to acquire such a license. Then we have the Securities Industry Conduct of Business Guidelines. So all these market operators that I mentioned here, they have a code of conduct. They are setting do's and do's in the market, and they cannot do them. Once they do them, then there are consequences. And that is also regulated by the Securities Industry Code of Business Guidelines. Then we have the Securities Industry Financial Resources Guideline. This guideline is also very important because if you are coming to the market, depending on the type of licensee that you are, there are certain minimum capitals that you must produce. So if you want to know the type of licensee and what you need to have to be able to acquire such a license, you need to look at the financial resources guidelines. And then finally, we have the Securities and Exchange Commission Corporate Governance Code for listed companies. So this particular one is for the companies that have gone ahead to list on the companies. There are also corporate governance practices within this code that govern them so that they are not found wanting. Now, having said that, should these rules be breached, what can the SEC do? One, the SEC can issue private warnings 
What is a private warning? We can write a letter to you and give you a warning that this is your last time or we are giving you two weeks within which to do something and you have to do it. We also have public censure. When the thing goes beyond a certain extent and we need to inform you as investors, we put it out there that this guy, we've asked him not to collect money from investors again, so you should not give your money to him. We also have the capacity to disqualify people from our market. So recently, after the revocation of these licenses, we have started hearing directors who we believe are culpable. So if we find that in the course of investigations, you are culpable in allowing the company's license to be revoked, leading it into liquidation, then of course, SEC has the capacity to block you from the market. And once we block you from the market, we have the capacity to also ring fence you from the other markets. Because if we make you unfit and improper in our market, I don't think the insurance industry will keep you. The banking sector will not take you, and the pension sector will not take you. So we have that power to also disqualify people. And then the power is not just limited to those who are operating in the industry now. Even those who saw the danger coming and they resigned, the power gave us, the, the rules gave us the powers to be able to call them back and then uh, sanction them. Then the ultimate sanction that we have within our framework is the revocation of your license where we believe that we can no longer work with you because you are a danger to our system. You pose a systemic risk. The investor is not safe with you. Then we have to revoke your license. We also have powers to give directives to all our licensees to direct them into a certain area. And then we can also direct that premises should be shut if we believe that you have obtained investors' money illegally and we are asking you to account to them and you are not able to, and we believe that there's a high risk that the funds can be dissipated. We have the capacity to take over the office, lock up shops, and conduct investigations in the premises. We can also send recommendations to the attorney general to prosecute you because we don't have powers of prosecution. So once your act is an offense or a criminal offense, then we have to refer the matter to the uh, investigative agencies like Yoko and the Attorney General, and then they will take you on. We also have capacity to freeze assets and accounts. When we revoke some of the licenses, licenses, we realize that some were trying to move monies quickly into their private accounts and other places. We quickly took over the premises, we went to uh, court, got orders, and we froze the accounts so that at the end of the day, we can use those to help pay some of the uh, people who have lost money. So in brief, these are the powers that we have. Should you invest in the market and should something happen, this is what we have to protect you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Badu. Um, in Bir in Bir in Yanananya <laughs> De yen ye honi digwa, anada ye de yeni sika ma njuma kasi de wun fin digwan, or ye wana sudi, anada sedi, de wobbe church rehin, bibi wofan invest education. Eh, or se mbra wodi ye juman o ye be ye dia sa awa tre, na se yeshe ni mubia, a kron switch re de nyimidi biara ubi ozi niska ba kwa de won fan ye juman u hien or wade wadi de min yimidi no wazi tu ho bi arabo tum. No one can can be no die, Juma. One of the Tarcronians said, The Wissica, the Majuma could the one Fendi Gua, or your one of the Tay, another or your one city, the Wobble Bow, now I shall wash a Wissica not do ye, only investor protection. No say, Wo Sicker Gomun, what the Inzamaka Crabin, I was the Juma, Sayesha, or ye, and one now by Jen Crata, or one over what the age more for one license season. Uh, oh, here, Papa, Pada, or a SEC, or Bosha, one or do. Now, I shall one in Jumum, no more cordo. Now, ye all know Sufi, or say, 
wonhu obiara obaje ekrata wo wono ho de se ejuma no akado de ye no on sina konuma wo wotum de wo befre na waje ne krata efininsim na ose se the moon company sin so so bi wo ho na se opedo ose sana krata anampo de opedo oje krata ni bi ka ho a ho na wo ma futu de yi na eje na de ye ejuma obaye ye na mbom oye dem companies and other licenses e do asan wo twen a wo je krata wo ho no wo ye ejuma se ibu ho na brother asu se asu twibu wo ho a wo de mon e kronye de wo botum abɔ kɔkɔ kɔkɔ na ɔkye de ɔwɔ wo na ho no wɔn ntem ye yɔ no so botum abɔ kɔwa abɔ kɔkɔ bi a ɔno ɔye bɔgum kɔkɔ na ɔkye de eh e ho na wo de ho ni sika ba de fa dzigwa no wo bɛte de wa abɔ kɔkɔ sɛ de mo kɔkɔ ɛchi no na sɛ wo hu de ma wo ka de ma nyen e da ho re ya na ɔno ikita wo krata de na mu wo besi wo kwan de nkotum na agye nkɔfo ho ni sika e dzaa ye dwuma ye yɔ no sifo wo tumi de license na na da krata na wo dzaa mo de fa ye dwuma no wo tumi de obeze obeje fi wo nsem na ntuma anye dwuma biem wo no tumi kro nyu so de sɛ wo hwɛ na sɛ sika na edi ye dwuma na bi ɔkɔ ye wo baabi no nkɔ ye wo baabi a wo wo tumi de wo be chɛchɛ wo kwan na wo akyɛ wo baabi a etumi na edi wo nyu ahwɛ ya nkyɛ wo ye na wo sane so wo tumi de sɛ eyɛ company bi na sɛ anada ye dwuma ku na agye nkɔfo ho ni sika de edi ye dwuma na ɔnyɛ de me dwuma na edi ye na mmom na anyɛ de sika na na ripia kɔ baabi a nka de edi bɔkɔ a wo wo tumi da afe company no wo be si wa no kra na wo agye wo tumi afi wo nsem na wa sha se na wo ye pensem pensem aman he na ye kosika gum na ye zisikugwa no he ni sika anyo bebe ye dri ye betin he ni mukakra na se ye tin he ni ma eh ye wo cultural troop bi wo ha cultural dance troop e won ma wo beyen wo robobo aye na ye tumi atwe he ni mu e won se wo pada wo son ma pocho aha so ba modena na bre nyim na beso na collection bi na ye aje amo Nananum cultural dance troupe
Nanamum Cultural Dance Troupe, Yadawana Se. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we, we are having all of you who went out to stretching. Uh, quickly, let's take our seat. We are going to have another very engaging um, presentation. And then another one. And then we'll come to you. Um, and especially, I have seen a lot of online engagement on the SEC platform. A number of people have joined us. To all our online audience, a very, very special thanks to all of you. We have also adopted um, a very unique strategy of responding to the questions that you're engaging us on the SEC platform. And please, if you have more that has not been responded to, just re-tag us so we can go back to give attention to that. And remember, we are live on Empire FM here in Takradi. We're going to listen to a presentation by Mrs. Deborah Ajimfra, and uh, she's going to speak on update on implementation of government bailout program. Please, let's welcome her with a hand of applause. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. I'm here to give a brief update on the government's bailout implementation. I'll start by giving a background to how we got here, what we are doing currently, and then since we've done it for about a year in terms of the bailout, I'll address some questions that keep coming up. So how did we get to the revocation of licenses in November 2019? Out of the 53 fund managers that had their licenses revoked, 21 of them had ceased operations. What it means is that some of them had padlocks on their doors, and some of them were no longer available for investors to see. One of them had been converted from a fund manager to a provision shop. So investors didn't even know where to find the people who run these companies. So indeed, we had to take our licenses from them. So about 60% were not even operating at all. And 40% were, 60% were operating, 40% were not operating at all. Then as my colleague said, we operate under a law. So under section 122 of our act, there were grounds for revocation. And we use these grounds to take the licenses from them. Just to say that the decision to take away the licenses wasn't taken lightly at all. We had hearings of complaints, several hearings, and my colleague, Mr. Buedu, and I chaired some of the hearings. We had orphanages, blind people, pensioners, very sick people. Some of the hearings, we had to hold them in cars because the people had stroke and couldn't even come out. So we, we really took information that was available to us before the decision to take the revocation was taken. Next slide, please. So these are some of the reasons why we took the license. Failure to honor client's redemption request, which I said was a common one. And the second one was failure to adhere to voluntary payment plans agreed at complaints hearing. So the SEC had these complaints hearing. People would come, the company would come, and they'll look in the regulator's face and say, we'll pay this person in three months. This orphanage cannot even buy water will pay them their money in three months. And the three months would pass, they will not pay. Six months will pass, they will not pay. A whole year would come, they will not pay. And that was a big issue for us. Did not segregate funds. As we said, we make sure that the capital market is run with transparency and integrity. So when you get people's money, you're supposed to invest it. You don't have to buy a new car. You don't have to marry a fourth wife with people's money. Next slide, please. Then one of the main things that we see is that the failure to perform functions honestly and fairly was a key reason. That means that if you are 55, you have five years to pension and they take your money, they should be able to tell you what they are using the money for. If you have that information, maybe you take another decision. So they didn't provide enough information. They were not transparent enough. So in November 2019, the very difficult decision to revoke 53 licenses was taken. And this is the breakdown. 
three appealed to the SEC. So one company got its license back. Two of them got the revocation commuted to suspension. And so that leaves 50. Out of the 50, three of them did not have any money of customers. So we came down to 47. And out of the 47, 43 of them have court orders. And let me explain. People have compared us to the BOG. And we have said that the SEC is not the same as BOG. The laws we use are different from the laws BOG uses. And we had to go through a different route to get our customers their money. And the route we had to use under our law was to go to the registrar of companies, the registrar general, and say, we've revoked the licenses of these companies. Then she went to court to get what we call the winding up order to be able to take over all the assets and liabilities of these companies. So successfully, she's been able to get 43 of them, four are, are still outstanding. And claims were also filed. So you got information to pick up forms at um, CBG branches. Claims were filed. Some have been paid. So initially, the bailout was because government realized that it wasn't the fault of the investors that this thing had happened. And these were licensed companies. They were companies that the SCC had issued license to. So the government took a social intervention and said, look, I want to help these people. And that is why it's called the bailout. Because my colleague said, we, we froze accounts. We froze accounts, all right, but if there's nothing in the account, then you frozen, but you cannot get money out of it. So the government had to step in to provide a bailout. And then the grounds for obtaining the bailout was that the court order should be obtained by the Registrar General first. But the government towards the end of last year realized that some of the court orders were delaying. So I'll give an example, Gold Coast, which is now Black Shield. The court order was delaying. So the government, sensitive to the plight of the investors, decided to do what we call a partial bailout. A partial bailout was the decision to give people 50,000 across board as a temporary measure to alleviate the pain as we wait for the court order. Next slide, please. So these are the companies. Those that have the court order are there. Next slide. More of those that, I said 43 have the court order now. So these are more companies. Next slide more companies with their court, or just before this one, please. So the outstanding companies are Apex, Black Shield, formerly Gold Coast, Dow Jays, and Crown Capital. Next slide, please. So those were expecting something to happen. So if you had more than 50,000 in Gold Coast or Black Shield, this is what will be the next thing to happen. If the Registrar General gets the court order, she'll publish the court order then she'll have a virtual creditors meeting, then she'll have a virtual class meeting, and after that, the payment will be done through GCB Bank. So that will be the, so if you had 100,000 and you've got 50,000 through the bailout, that means you have 50,000 more. So that means you are expecting more money from the government, and that more money will come after the court order has been given. And when the court order is given, what would happen? So the minimum amount there is 70,000 instead of the 50. So if you had 100,000, you get a difference of 20,000 if you're an individual. If you're above 60 years, you get everything at once when the court order comes. I thought you clap for us that pensioners have been thought about. <laughs> then all schools, faith-based organizations, hospitals, will also get 100% in when the court order comes. Then financial institutions, associations, welfare, credit unions will get 50%. Then all claimants who have a significant amount, that the 50% is little. So that means they, if they get 20%, it will be higher. So if I have 500,000, I would go for 20% of that 500,000 to top up my 50,000. So this would, is what will change if the court order comes. And as I said, we've been doing this for a year, so we know what the regular questions would be. 
The first one will be, I filled a proof of death form, but I've still not received a claim ID. Please send an email to gh underscore fundmanagers at pwc.com. So you filled the proof of death form, you picked it up at a CBG branch, or you got it online, and you filled it, but you still not received anything from us. Please send an email to gh underscore fundmanagers at pwc.com. Then the next question is, I've received, the person says, they have received their claim ID, but the validated amount is not what they were expecting. So you say your money is 100,000, but you got 20,000 on the text message you got. Please, again, send an email to gh underscore fundmanagers at pwc.com or call 024-249453. Why we are giving you these email addresses is that you'd have to send supporting documents. You cannot just call and give the information. So it's better to use the email address. And the next one is, I've received a claim ID and I would want to accept the government's bailout. Just to explain that it's not compulsory to accept the government bailout. You can decide that I don't want the government's free money. <laughs> so, <laughs> as, in, <laughs> as in somebody will pay for it, yes. You don't want the taxpayer's money to be used to sort you out. So you want to wait for the official liquidator to sell the assets of the company and then pay you. That's the one you want. So if that's the case, then you don't have to sign up. But if you want to sign up, you have to go to www.bailout.lgd.gov.gh to read and accept that agreement. And by accepting that agreement, you are signing all your claims against the company to the government to now go after the company. Then the next one is you've accepted the government bailout, but now you want to take part of your money because the money is sitting with AM Fund, which is a fund, man GCB Capital is the fund manager managing this fund. So you can decide to leave your money with them. But if you think you don't want to leave your money, you want to redeem part of it, you can go to the gcbcapital.com dot gh slash bailout and you find a redemption form there or you can go to any gcb bank for a redemption form and submit it then finally you have filled a redemption form but have still not received a receipt received a message on the payment process so you fill the form to redeem part of your money but you still haven't received any message on how you get that money you have to send an email to amfund at gcb.com.gh or call the phone numbers 0302-949-347. So this is just a brief highlight on where we are with the government bailout. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Deborah Ajembra. And you are here to seven women being smart, be attentive and say you do be at us, Anna. Mantin here, you. You will be at us. Ain't he a from November 8, 2019? And now, open the SEC. You may call off share, um, secure one or no, no, the OJ. You may could be one line since if you want in same or chair in the same chair, SEC. Share J, them, uh, you may call our own one line since if you want in same. Them to make no bomb year 53 fund managers. I say no more 21. If you are not correct, I want now we jail to make the cry now we go out to tomb now 32. Now the one will operate, but a boy who was cash or a cage be a book on a when you were cobra who's cow on sanka you might be see basa into sec do you embrace or someone inside act 929 section 1222 b to told them to make who know a name in a room. Na na wa bende aho chamba inta banu ye do boboa na wetia aho na won ska ka dem dwe meko ni mu ni bi zama won ona otuzin de pashiao eh bro for noin in your pashiao bailout great me da se pashiao bailout e na ye she aban ro she do ya rcc do zama won but o zin o san so border de o ye man fu pi confuse sec on ye bank of ghana won dwe mano or trim the SEC a different entity from Bank of Ghana. 
or Sanche Mede, answer na SCC Botum, Waja Binisikama, no, Chede be a Registrar General, Akaji Court Order, a way to Jumazen or Zakum, Unyabo Church and Fund Managers, Aurora, in their Wound Jumano or Watu Tutum, na or Chang and there, Seusika or Gold Coast on your black shoulder, no, no, on chair, a bestial because Usikano, a beriba, because on chair, SCC in the Court Order. O che mi da se den saka court order na nya ma kura na biem bi wo wa odo tumi ye an sana sika no wa sha se de amanfo warning sabaka mozi kan yin da o publish order and uh, by register of companies order ready to go mo bi an hu de be bi asem no we ko doing yin ono na nche no be ye virtual meeting e be meeting na obi an so we tum wa be be no we tie ma o record sika no ye botu ya through gcb bank GCB bag. I want to admit as I'm down the bear. No, I say, seeing you below 60 years, sir, who seek no claims no, a banya up to 70,000 Ghana cities in Canada would see 50,000 and there were the 20 account and why 70,000 Ghana cities on on a claim no one sabaka on yet a one to the butcher no boom zamo on on then channel say a pensioner is a 60 years no number ya a whisker no one sabaka in a hundred percent. When Jacob in poem, Nabia a school, a chapel, and a faith based organization, chapel, and a mosque, and a shrine, and a baby, I don't know, Sabah can whisk, and also 100%. And a financial institution, so Benya 150% of one validated uh, amount, and also Sikano, but be okay doing. On a mention of 20%, on your claimant, uh, other claimant, I uh, won the 60 years, and also there. Uh, you know, also twenty percent, and I want to be can. We say so. Any other question? Questions? Can you be MBA? Or feed the amount for we be sending P? Into now, some po or two more the two. Into I guess that or you claim you're sure that you go for P. When it's some business, we're not ready. No, Mrs. Debra, I wash it now. We in it now. No, but don't check the book of baby. I enter now because in some day on P now so go a trap. Or a buy. You better not go in them. Nay, the next presentation. And that is going to be focusing on the inv investing in the capital market and Ponzi scheme education. Because how to identify a Ponzi scheme. And the years 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 the and the years and the years and and Good evening. All protocols observed. Uh, the first part of my presentation was virtually covered by Dr. Edu. So to save time, I will move straight to the Ponzi scheme so that you can get enough time to ask questions. Uh, when we mention Ponzi scheme, there's uh, one particular person whose name, you know, come into our mind. And that person is uh, Mr. Charles Ponzi. So the scheme was named after him. He was an Italian who moved to US, you know, for his life. And it was around that time that, you know, he came up with this scheme. So we explain how the scheme works. In 1920, he was jailed for 14 years. And the charges that were leveled against him were 86 and he spent 14 years in prison. At that time, he was owing an amount of, an estimated amount of seven US dollars. Uh, the question is, how did Charles came up with this, you know, idea? Uh, the history has that he received a letter from Spain, and in that letter, there was a coupon that he can exchange that coupon for a stamp, which is very expensive than the cost of, you know, the coupon. So what he did was that he asked his agents to buy coupons from other countries and send them to him in the U.S., and he exchanged those coupons for a very expensive ones. And he was making money. The idea itself, for me, was not wrong. He was trying to take advantage of the market arbitrage. But he got a problem because he wanted to be maybe greedy. So he asked people to bring their money 
And he promised them to give them, if you keep your money with him for 45 days, he will give you a return of 50%. And if your money stay with him for 100 days, he will give you a 100% return. That is where he got into trouble. So people were bringing money to him. And the returns that he was generating from the exchange of the stamps was not enough to pay the returns or the promise that he has made to the investors. So what he decided to do was that if Mr. A bring his money for investment, he will use that money to pay Mr. B. And that was the process. So it got to a point, you know, people were not bringing money to him again. So eventually he was caught and he landed in the prison for 14 years. So if we want to know the genesis or the history, how the Ponzi scheme started, that is how Charles started the scheme. And we usually come across another term, which is the pyramid scheme. Pyramid scheme is different from the Ponzi scheme. The reason is that the pyramid scheme, this is how it works. If we are five people, we'll try to recruit another five people. And then the, the, first, the second people that we recruit, they will pay their money to us. And then they also go and recruit another people. And the third generation will pay their money to the second generation. So it's like you are building a blocks. Those are the top will benefit. And it gets to the point the base will be so big. So if you are not getting new people to bring in the money, the scheme also will collapse. The fundamental difference between the Ponzi scheme and the pyramid scheme is that with the Ponzi scheme, the money goes to, you know, the supposed farm manager or the uh, investment house. Whilst the pyramid scheme, you pay the money directly to those ahead of you. That is how the two schemes work. So, but sometimes we do use the term interchangeably. They are not the same. In terms of operations, they are not the same. So now the question is, what are the key elements of the Ponzi scheme. What they normally do is that they use new investors' funds to pay uh, the old investors. And they also use creative accounting scheme to manipulate their records to show that you know, the scheme is doing well. Another thing that they use is that when the scheme rec you know, record losses, they will not you know, publish that one for the people to see how the scheme is performing. These are some of the key elements if you are looking for the Ponzi scheme uh, you will come across. And normally the Ponzi scheme promoters, what they do is that when they realize that things are going bad, they can disappear from the vicinity that they are operating. They will, oh, one day you go there and the office is locked, you can't find them again. And they can also sell the shares or move into another business that they are transferred the existing you know, investors to another scheme. And what they try, an, another scheme of tactics that they use is that when they realize that maybe the regulator is coming after them, they try to get some of the investors to resist you know, the regulator that, you know, the guy is doing a genuine business. We are, he's making money. And you people want to, you know, spoil his business for him. I don't want to mention any company's name here, but I believe we are aware of what has happened in this country before. So these are some of the manipulations now that they use so that public, you know, will be angry with the regulator that the regulator is trying to spoil somebody's business. And then... Uh, if you go in, they will try it and tell you that, you know, don't touch that guy. Now, let's see the tactics that they use. What they normally do is we have what we call a uh, source of credibility. When they come into this area, they will try to look out for people who are credible, who has an image in the society, people respect them. And then they will associate themselves with those, uh, you know, credible people. 
And when they come to you, oh, this man is with us. He, we are doing business with him. I remember there was a complaint that we handled. Uh, there were people went to some place to do a program, and they invited this man. He was a member of parliament, Honorable Mike Gizzo, to come and chair the program for them. And then they used his name to sell their product. So they got into trouble, and we invited them. We invited, you know, now the man is a chief. So we invited the chief to our office and tried to ask questions, you know, his role that he played in that uh, affair. It was there that he told us that, you know, the people came there, and they invited him to come and chair their program for them. He is not director of the company. He has nothing to do with the company. So they use people who have, you know, image in a society to sell their product or whatever they want to do to the people that, you know, these people is with us, so we are credible. And then also use what we call social consensus, that people have already put their money, given their money to us. They are doing good business with us, so when you come, you are safe, nothing will happen. And they also try to create an impression that uh, if, if you don't come early, maybe you know, they, we have few chances or space for new people. So if you don't come on time, uh, we may not be able to admit you. To create an impression that if you, if you don't rush, you may miss you know, millions of cities. And the nature of women being, you know, everybody wants to make money, so you may rush and go and put your money into the air. Uh, hands. What are the red flags that we can, you know, identify when we see those kind of scheme? Uh, one of them is that they will promise you a high guarantee investment that when you put your money or you give your money to us, will give you a higher return. And another one is that they will give you an insurance that nothing will go wrong with your investment. Recently, there was a case that we handled the commission and the person tried to deceive the investor that we have, you know, uh, taken an insurance policy to cover your investment so that when something goes wrong, you can fall on the investment. Only to be told that that supposed insurance policy was what we called fidelity insurance, just to cater if there is employees of the company in you know, or temper with something, the insurance company will take care of those things, but it doesn't cover the person's investment. And they also try to give you consistent positive returns. And you and I know that in every economy there is up and downs. So it is not possible for someone to give you consistent positive returns at all times. Even if you are buying a tomato, sometimes you go to the market the tomato price will come down. Another time it will go up. These are some of the futures of genuine investment. There's no investment that guarantees consistent you know, returns. If somebody tells you that, be careful. And some of the things that they use are accounting you know, uh, uh, manipulations of their records. And then also try to get people who have invested with them their testimony to convince you, oh, I put my money there, and they gave me so-so and so. So when you put your money there, they will give you a good returns. Now that we have seen some of the red flags of the uh, Ponzi scheme, how can we protect ourselves? The first thing that we need to do is that we have to be very skeptical. We have to ask questions when such people come to us. Don't take everything on a face value. Ask questions what they do, and also, be suspicious on the things that they are giving to you. And check out the seller if they are trying to sell something to you. Uh, try to understand. And the most important advice that I will give is that if you don't understand the investment, please don't put your money in it. If you don't understand it, don't put your money in the scheme. Otherwise, you will live to regret and also, when we see those kind of things, let us report to the commission. And we have put down our toll-free number and our website. 
Let us report those kind of elements in our society to get rid of those people so that we can do genuine business in our country. Thank you very much. Um, time is far spent, so is it okay if we just go straight to your consent? Yes. It is okay. Thank you. Um, well, I think that's a major part of this evening's engagement. Yes, Ato. I think we have one mic with Ato. Yes. So um, we're taking five at a time. Mopawanicho. Asamne se bisa, but modena ne bisa. Ekro ebiye ne bisa. Men can men can stories. It can stories. Have you? You probably banana no so I can story. Yeah, you know you can stories. Yeah, betcha. And see, bisa wa asamno se sika wo sika no ya dem na wo tu ya wo dema ne bisa wa asam. Then eko na you probably fraba. To me, sir, one one na wo wa asam bisa no. Um, Mike, no ya tu. E one na wo wo han. Ya bo bo modern and pocho onam COVID protocols. Since ya ya line titin titin. Nti nyimpa baye bansa beji na huwuriya na nyimpa kro abba. Godwin, I think you can direct that for us. Yes, nti awana wa wa this particular role. So from a hey, ribe day, ye bo yusi da maiki, mofo chow, dami ye yine yusu common maiki ni nti ye beji na wa, ye ma ye nose mask and on sa hen. Nti se wa sembisa, enyi zimara, a beji na maiki nechi ma hen. Se wa sembisa, enyi zimara, je na maiki nechi ma hen. So one more don't conduct us a bubble was in and uh baby uh if you bay not some is an up on the top fast straight to the point now in pain for a shake your name again okay but we are in a three three four status yeah three three four status um at two i think you can begin from your end it looks Great. more organized fantastic but you want to do so or do so um yin yin jina brother no shake or corner but you can so we'll go to my once in a while and i won't quit you kakra and <laughs> Yeah, the Sika call legacy fund fund management. Now all can also the auto suspension. The bain na umbe free suspension be bana tam bain umbe ba mainstream. And now say suspension no do mako tuo no umu be bi bana. A kwam bain so so no that suspension be pasu ni suye yezake Sika. Thank you. All right, but I say straight to the point. Importo for was not your domain. My name is Wilfred Apion. I work for Kuku Abrawapa. Uh, looking at the board of directors, SEC inaugurated, I want to find out who represents the investor community interest in the board. Thank you very much. We'll take a third one on this side. Good evening. But you are from said Gamma, Mifi Ports. My question here, a follow up question on the legacy issue. Legacy fund management, I think the SEC will keep one line. And what the more on the back. Up to now, you can't can you can you know what worry you are, you can't say you can Secondly, so uh, with uh, Black Shield, you can't say anything there. You know the right place because you can I mean, you can't say I don't have any idea about business. You see, I don't have a black shoulder. I don't have any idea. I don't have any idea about how to handle this. And next time, I will be able to invest a bit back. I will be able to operate for 20 years. I will be able to check the lines. I will be able to check the documents. I will be able to check the documents. At the end of the day, I will be able to check the documents. I will be able to check the documents. We may have heard many times. I'm a nice time. He ain't been no me and friends can copy be a obey a banana. We don't want to see. It has said. Okay. Yes, gentlemen. My name is Ben Bright Kaiko. I'm from Future Global Resources, Christian Bogoso Mine. My question is that the trustees of Future Global Resources requested for their fund 
from IGS, uh, IGS uh, investment company. Over one and a half years, they still keep on giving us stories. And they still keep on not fulfilling the payment plan they give us. Uh, the question I want to know is that, uh, can SEC confirm that IGS is regulated by, uh, is SEC regulating IGS? My next question is that if IGS still keeps on postponing the payment plan and are not conforming to whatever payment plan they are giving, uh, I want to know the steps that uh, SEC can take in relation to this. I also want to know that, I also want to know, when we speak to IGS, what they tell us is that they are investing the monies with seed capital, uh, seed financial services, and just like financial services. I want to know the locus of these two companies uh, with SEC. Thank you. Thank you. Ben. Yes, sir. What you have decreased to for me, mobile money agent. My question is simple. <laughs> How do you determine a simple question? I know you have a good question. What's your name? As for investment. But you have to choose your name. You have to choose your name. You have to school. But what's the question of validation online? We are on a phone put me how we so better than in penalty work I care them validation or online. It's then I'm paid me. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah, that's it. But show your budget being a nap in penny for you and you will not yet you do. Made the summer don't go. Citronella essential farmer. What will happen to our farm customers if the court order turns otherwise in favor of the defunct financial institution? Second, the Chief Justice, which is seen to the court order, is he working in a time frame or it's not a time bound work? Some, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. But your friend in Kansan Wai, Mr. Mipesham, I'm a question I'm a person business, sir. Gokus, for the brand of Muya Juman. And then Tina, a ma, a sack for not some warm and near my year, Bassa, and some of the information they bring. I don't know my person who had the green tea sack here. In a fence, so young fans will be sky here, a one sixty five, not an insacan, fifty thousand, a car fifteen thousand, or no, a ban in Sabacanina. Thank you very much. Um, Pocho, my yen, ye betrenica cra, na ye yano, ye we and I at your do. Um, I think we have, we have our resource persons there with their mics, so we'll give the attention to them to give us some few responses. Let's begin with what uh, Emmanuel for Sumensa began with, that their monies were sent to legacy fund managers with the associated questions. Reverend, you're picking that up? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, um so the answer is legacy fund management, their revocation was commuted to suspension. We gave them some conditions. OK. OK, so legacy fund management, um, the, they appealed to the AHC, and the revocation was commuted to suspension. They were given some conditions to fulfill. Until we are satisfied that they have cleared those conditions, their license remains suspended. So that is the status. In terms of um, those who still have um, monies locked up with them and having difficulty, um, uh, submit a complaint to the commission regarding the difficulty you are having with legacy fund uh, management a company. So that's what I can say on the, the legacy uh, fund management company. Okay, then someone asked a question, Wilfred, about the, the board of the SEC. The constitution of the board of the SEC is specified in our enabling act, and it has some institutional representation, and then also the president uh, appoints, and the president appoints people who, in his 
estimation have what it takes to bring value uh, to the table, to the running of the, um, the SEC? So that's the answer. Uh, you're asking who represents the investor uh, community. I believe that those that the uh, president appoints um, have the mandate to represent the interest of the investor uh, community. Uh, someone asked a question on Black Shield. How do I know um, the right fund manager to deal with? Uh, I think the gentleman who spoke in fancy. I don't know whether that one, maybe uh, Dr. Edu, you use your fancy skills uh, to address it. But somebody also asked that, why did SEC wait for so long? Uh, in the case of Gold Coast. And let me take some time to explain. Uh, I think when Carlos was uh, giving the presentation of the toolkits, the regulatory toolkit, he gave an idea that we, we go about it in a progressive manner. Okay, the regulator doesn't, uh, at the first sign of a challenge or difficulty, immediately pull the plug. That's not how regulation is done. The regulator also does not always explain to the public all the things that we are doing to ensure that the uh, market operators are staying on the straight and narrow. What I want to say is that when we come up with a revocation, it means that we have given sufficient time uh, for the entity to correct their challenges. You know, so uh, somebody will say, oh, you should have, um, you know, taking action early. Uh, that's, you, I mean, the way you, you'll be seeing it. But I'm saying as a regulator, we go through a number of processes. I, I remember that uh, one of the companies that we took some action, not even those that revoked the license, we got a lot of people coming to say, oh, but why are you moving? Why don't you allow them uh, to solve their, their issues? But of course, they didn't know what we had done in the background. So that's to answer that. It's not a question of we waited, we were sleeping, and we're not taking action. No. We go through a number of engagements. And if you look at the announcement that we put out on the revocation, we, we say that after a, a, a series of engagements, when it was clear that this was in the best interest of the public, we had to take the decision, the decision we took. So please bear that in mind. But I don't um, know. Reverend, Fine. I think there was a question from Ben. Um, I don't know whether you are addressing that on the concern of the future no, I, I, I global have it here. resources. I, I, I have it here. I just uh, jumped onto the, because I was talking about Black Shell. Great. Just to answer the two. Dr. Edo. So I don't know whether you want to, uh, he was asking about how do you know a good, um, how will you identify um, a good farm manager so that you can speak the infancy. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, uh, I, I ask him, Papa. Obi, a oil farm manager, a all SEC license. No, say, can office hold. I don't know who the SEC license or bond office hold. That is one. Two, be a na in the matum sesa. Eh, who? Or shall I make you understand? Fine. Time now, come on. In him, in him, ni jinabio a wo SEC. He took me for telephone. First, he said, I found a more excellent drama, and you want to a boy P. But to me for telephone, a free SEC, a bit said there. The damn company are also there, or Molasses C. Nijina be what's then? Motum, but the Mr. Kama Hana. You took me a dama, a bachelor man who there, and part them company, some of them come on a bottom work with the amount. Um, that these are some of the things that you have to look at for. But who said this there? Our friend then, Obi, Denisika, Akohoma, Sama Bahuana. These are the things that are about Mamma and Hu, them company, no, Nijina Bio, and the Juma Oldi, Ewa Ghana. In T, your best friend there, what's the Obia, Sabi Sabi, or Akana, the Nuhu Sumana? Aha, in T, and Fred there, answer this Kabama, Obi, Ufi, then Brikono, it took me your two free number. On your chibiara to free a fra into a bibia. Yes, and I have a color code on your website. Your dumb family is eight or six, we know what you know. 
obi ade kala ye yellow o che de assembly ye no ho ye obi no ma wo problems get get bi ye gudu ye hwehwe mu ayen wi ti dan ko fu ya kala hon red ti se hu red o che de dem company no asam kakra wo ho inti in fa wo se kan ko red no wo ho inti sabi se into mpo in ko website se in on kind na ma ko com center ana bibi ne bi se do mpa da me hwe dem company we cc one website but ma hwe ho ne jinagba mama na am dey here dem a obobua ko bra ye ko ye yim thank you Okay, uh, in cancer, who asked the question on the Gold Coast, why they delay? You also asked that if you had 165,000 and you got 50,000 in the bailout, what happens? When the court order is given, uh, if you are 60 years and above, you have the full amount paid in your tier one, which means that you have access to the money. But if you are not 60 years and above, that is you are below and you are not a company, then the formula is 70,000 or 20 percent. So if your money is 165,000, it means that what you get is 70,000. In other words, you get 20,000 in addition to the 50 that has been paid, and then the um, remaining um, amount will be in the tier two. So you get a full amount, just that if you are not 60, 60 years and above, only 70,000 is in the tier one. And if you have received 50,000 already, then you get just the top up of 20K. So that's for in cancer's question. Then Ben Bright, um, IGS, yes, is regulated by uh, SEC. Um, if you are having issues with them, if you haven't submitted a complaint, submit a complaint to SEC, uh, the email address info at sec.gov.gh, submit a, a, a complaint. SEC doesn't regulate seed financial services or JISLA. These are institutions regulated by the Bank of Ghana. I'm aware that our fund managers, our licensed fund managers, invest monies with these um, various financial institutions. So that's the answer on, to, to the questioner on uh, IG. Yes. And then there was a question, um, Samuel Donko, uh, you said what happens uh, if there are no, the liquidation petition is not successful, and also whether the courts uh, are working within a time frame. Um, <laughs> Carlos, you want to answer that? Yes, okay. The licensee is unable to pay its debts as and when they fall due. That is why the liquidator is in court. So the liquidator is telling the judge that this guy, if we don't liquidate him so that we ring fence his assets and sell it to pay the people he owes, he cannot pay them. So that's the reason. So before the judge makes an order, the judge will be sure that the real reason why we are in court is because of the investors. So before the judge makes an order that is not in favor of the liquidation, the judge will make sure that there are orders also to protect the investors in that. So the judge will not just throw out the liquidation application without protecting the people that uh, are before him. Now the other thing is somebody asks whether the court works within the time frame. Yes, of course. But the courts have various vacation periods. So, for example, uh, December 22nd, all the way to January 8th, the courts are on break. 31st July, all the way to 2nd October in uh, the year, they are on break. Then, then there's Easter. Sometimes judges fall ill. Sometimes you go to court and they have gone on training. So, <laughs> so, there are a combination of factors. Sometimes the lawyers actually get frustrated because you move your vehicle from your office, you drive all the way only for you to be told that the judge is having a meeting with the chief justice, so all cases should be adjourned. There's really nothing that you can do. But we believe that this application is not a very difficult one. So by the next legal year, which is reopening second week in October, 
by the time we go into December, this matter, all things being equal, should be cleared. Thank you. Okay, there was a question on um, uh, the Gold Coast um, Mutual Fund or Collective Investment Scheme that is now being managed by Ashfield. Um, again, what we say is that if you have any issues with uh, any of these um, fund management companies, what you should do is to send in a complaint. Now, the mutual fund or the unit trust, um, it's an entity that is in existence. We didn't revoke the license of the fund. So it's a question of new fund managers who are running it. So um, you need to engage them. If you are engaging them and you're having difficulty, report to SEC and then we'll be able to address it. I think I've touched on all the questions, so we can do. All right, so Mrs. Deborah Ajemfra will add one or two. I think the person who said he doesn't know how to do online, you can go to any GCB, Ubetimia called GCB Bank, Branch Bia, Ombe Boa Fele Forms, no. Nemum, Omo Omo Yeni Online, no. Omo Process, no, ye faster. Saying, wow, Ube Kohua Ko Fele Form, Afe no Mo Debe Ko. So that's what you want to say, but there's help for you at any GCB branch at all. Thank you very much. And so we'll get back to taking some more questions. Majid three waha, no ma budget three waha. Mupacho bozin na bisa wasem. Mupacho, Mrs. John Kwanza. I'm a water company. It's called Kamiya Medokoto Media Investment. Na na se o ba chano otia instead of over tia miskano hundred percent otia only fifty percent. Nti wano na mentasi na mpere amdi tumani mna. Thank you very much. Mopocho, aside, I want to watch in a whole CCRO. I ain't too and Jay question me. I do in the abortion. I want to watch in a one year. You want in some be sending in a over to bows in chair. I'm not be so awesome. I am Max Wagachi, and my question is a bit technical. Um, we are, all, we are all aware that um, there are a lot of players when it comes to the investment arena whereby we have custodians. We have trustees and the likes of the rest. But uh, I don't understand why most of them were doing conflict of interest, whereby they were operating, same company was operating as a fund manager, same company operating as a custodian trustee. They were doing all these things at the same time. So I want to find out what SEC is currently doing in order not to um, for us to get this um, problem again. And the second one has to do with the presentation that was done. We are all aware, as you said, that before you can buy shares, you need a CSD account. Even before you can buy treasury bill, now you need a CSD account. And the CSD account, one way or the other, protects you, even if your share certificate gets lost. Uh, currently, NIC introduced something for insurance whereby those who are doing undercutting of premium, they have infused their system into that of the insurance companies whereby whatever insurance that you sell, they are able to what? Detect and know. So I want to find out, is there any way that SEC can integrate their system with the investment houses, even before they can come up with a fixed deposit product. You guys will be aware of it that this product is coming up and this is the return or the rate that the company is what, promising. So that whatever that they sell, SEC will be able to sit at their office and what, know or detect those what, investments, just to control. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. So, we'll take the last one here. My name is Christopher Tessinkofi. I have a friend who wants to invest in my microfinance company. But his funds are locked up with uh, SEC. I want to find out how SEC will facilitate that arrangement, if it is possible, <laughs> since you are all regulators. To, to be clear, is, is, is money locked up with SEC? Is that what you meant to say? That's how I would say. It's SEC that took over the license. No, but be, before, before SEC came in, which organization was that? 
Could you help out with the name so that you get an appropriate answer? Goku Secretis. Thank you. <laughs> so we we'll take the, the remaining three from yes, the side. Sir. Okay. Um, during the presentation, I... Your, your name, sir. Sorry, my name is Maxwell Sekum. Um, Tapari. Um, in the presentations, um, I never saw any of the insurance companies as, as uh, capital or license to engage in investments. But the current trend is that most of these uh, uh, insurance companies are doing investment products. Or let's say, yeah, they are doing investment products. Instead of selling insurance, what I know is that the insurance companies sell insurance. But now they are going, I work in a hospital setting, and daily you see these uh, brokers or agents selling the insurance as investment products. So you are, give, you are, you are, you are promised uh, either a doubling or something. I mean, it returns after a number of years, five or 10 years. So please, I think if your attention has not come to this, kindly put your ears on the ground and you'll notice that they are underground doing investment, okay? okay? So that I don't come back to this situation all over again. Thank you, Maxwell. Yes, sir. All right, my name is Joseph Dazi Takrati, and I believe that most of us have heard about cryptocurrencies. So I want to find out, are they also regulated by SEC or Wankasa Fautiruji? Are cryptocurrencies regulated by SEC? That's my question. Thank you. Yes, sir. And um, this will be the final for this round. Yes, thank you very much. I'm Daniel. And um, I have an auntie who invested 5,000 Ghana cities in gold, uh, not gold coast, gold money market fund. And when all these things started, she's been going up and down from Akachi Ho, Akachi Ho. And an old lady of 74 years old, that's, that, is, that is a sad aspect of 5,000. Just in, on, on the 5th of May, the, when she has to go through completion of um, forms for validation, they sent her a message that it has been successful, validation has been successful. The sad aspect of it is that when she came to me last time, she wept that she wanted to take this money before she died. And she doesn't want to die and leave the 5,000 for somebody to take. So, sir, Please, sir what is I the am, question? The question is, I want to find out if the GMMF license has also been, uh, what do you call it? Revoked. Yes. Thank you. And, and what steps is SEC taking to make sure that the old lady take her money? Thank you. All right, so, Ama, you will indulge me here. Let me take just one more question from Facebook. Benjamin Adum Ama watching us says that he will appreciate a distinction between class meeting and the creditors meeting and the cutoff date for the GCFM validation. Thank you. For the one who asked the first question, we didn't get the name of the company, so uh, I'm, I'm unable to um, respond to that. Deborah, you take the question on the class meeting and the creditor meeting just to um, bring out the difference. Um, let me pick the easy ones. Uh, cryptocurrency is not currently regulated by the SEC. Actually, we have, we have issued a notice to the public that it's not regulated by us. It's currently not recognized either as a currency. Bank of Ghana has also done that, uh, nor a security. So like you said in Fancy, if you go there, no, nah, no. Walla or walla. So that's on the uh, 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 crypto. Um, on the selling of investment products by insurance brokers and maybe some other players, uh, it's well noted, um, you know, to sell investment products, you have to be licensed by the SEC. I am aware that 
insurance companies, when they mobilize premiums, they need to invest the premiums uh, in order to be able to um, keep uh, their obligations to the insured. So I know that. But it is not right for them to sell uh, investment product. I hope you understand. So there's a distinction. Maybe things are not clear and we'll take steps to, um, to uh, you know, bring, bring out that uh, uh, clarity. Yes, Carlos, you, you, you can, you can, you can uh, expand on that. So if you can get a microphone and then uh, on the, those who are, who are not licensed uh, to sell investment products. I'm aware that some banks are also doing that and um, we'll take some. So Carlos, you can just come and chip in on the um, insurance bit. Yes, uh, it is true. It is true that some insurance companies try to ride on the back of the securities industry law to sell investment products. And there's one company that we caught last year. We reported the matter to the National Insurance Commission. And they asked that insurance company to pull down the whole advert. And they paid penalty to the SEC. So we are on the lookout. And uh, the gentleman, what you said is true. We are pulling them out one by one. You know, we have a financial sector regulators forum where we discuss these issues. So once I see another regulator licensees in my market, I just call my fellow regulator and he knows what to do. Just like if they call us that they have an SEC licensee doing fixed deposit, I know what to do. So we are dealing with it. So please, if you get wind of such situations, just let us know. Thank you. Okay, so um, Deborah, if you can get ready to answer the question on the class meetings. Paul, if you can uh, get a mic to answer the question on the conflict of interest uh, bit. Uh, so the gentleman who asked a question about the gold ma uh, money uh, market fund and your relative who has 5,000. The license for GMMF was not revoked. Um, it's the license of the fund manager that's gold coast that was revoked. And when we revoked, there were actually 18 collective investment schemes that were affected in the sense that the managers who were managing those 18 uh, firms lost their license. So what we did was we instructed the directors of the collective investment schemes, the 18, to appoint new fund managers, which they have. My understanding is that uh, for the Gold Coast had two funds. Uh, gold uh, Money Market Fund and then Gold um, Unit Trusts, uh, I can't remember the name, but they had two funds. And there are two uh, managers who, gold, gold Fund Unit Trust, okay, and then Gold Money Market Fund. So they've appointed uh, new fund managers, Ashfield um, um, and then First Finance. So I don't know what the difficulty is, whether let's say she's trying to access the money uh, and then they are giving her a problem. So you can just advise her to send an email or maybe the inquiries desk that we have uh, at the back, you can just uh, give more details so that they can assist. But really, the, a new family has been appointed, so they should just manage uh, the expectations of the client. Because not everybody will take out their money. It's a mutual fund. And people are bringing money, people will take out money. So it's a question of, if you want to take out your money, you fill the redemption form, and then they, they sort you out. But if there's a problem, then you have to come to us. So you can maybe lodge, uh, go to the inquiries section when we close and, and leave out some information. So if you can do the, um, the class and character meetings. So the difference between the, the creditor meetings are bigger meetings for everybody who the company owed, from employees to SNIT to service providers. So it's a big meeting. But the class meeting is for a specific class of investors. And these are the ones that the government is providing the bailouts for. So the class meeting is only for the investors that the government is providing the bailouts for. So that's the difference. Yeah, on the issue of conflict of interest, um, it was one of the reasons why some of these licensees were actually revoked. You found that they had invested in related parties. 
Um, so we recently issued the investment guidelines for fund managers. Until now, there were no clear distinct. They were required to perform honestly and fairly. But what is honest and what is fair? If he has given the money to his wife's company, when there are 20,000 other companies in Ghana, is that fair? Maybe his wife is the best manager in town. So we've spelled out limitations on how much they can do with the related party. They have to document the process. They have to send it to an investment committee. And they cannot do more than 15% of their AUM with related parties. You raise the issue of fund manager, custodian, and trustee. Um, the fund managers typically have what we call three product categories. You saw we had pension funds, which have very specific regulations. Then we have the CISs, which are collective investment schemes. Those are structured, and they require you to have, for a mutual fund, you need to have a board of directors separate from the fund manager's board. You need to also have a custodian appointed. The custodian is usually a bank. An insurance company also be a custodian. So maybe the only situation where you may have that coming up is where you have a fund manager managing other funds. You have an other fund category where they manage, you go to them and say, I want to use money my fund for me specially. So you run a scheme. Most of those whose money got logged up, they did these what you call a fixed deposit. So you give them the money, you don't know what they are doing with it. They don't disclose to you the portfolio holdings because you've gone for a managed scheme. Now what we said in investment guidelines is that in the managed scheme, you have to tell the investor the portfolio composition. Because how are they generating the returns for you? It is not a black box. The typical Ponzi scheme is a black box. You don't know what they are doing. You don't know what businesses they are investing in. You're just saying 10%. Right? In investments in the capital market, it's not a black box. The money is going somewhere. It's either going to government or going to businesses. Who are those businesses? What kinds of securities do they hold? The investor should know that such information. So we've put that out there and are requiring the firms to comply with that level of disclosure. It's not magic. It is not a miracle. It is hard-nosed investment that they have to understand and communicate to, to parties as well. So we are hoping that with the reforms we've brought in, some of these activities um, should cease. Thank you. Thank you. Um, OK, uh, maybe just to add, um, also there are some institutions, let's say some banks, that have a custodian license but they may have a subsidiary that has uh, an, investment, uh, an investment arm. So it, it doesn't mean that it's the same entity, okay? But the, the point is that we, we have uh, put in place, um, you know, stronger measures to ensure that uh, with the guidelines we have issued, they would follow it to avoid, um, you know, related party transactions that breach uh, certain limits that we have put in there. So, so that's just by way of clarification. Please, um, host, you can carry on. Thank you very much, Director. Um, so we have just realized that a number of you have concerns. What we can do, because you're already standing, is to give you the opportunity to ask your questions. Uh, but then for those of you who are not clear with the responses that were given, or you have further questions, would you kindly pen this down? Just write this down. Um, direct your questions to info at sec.gov.gh. Info, I-N-F-O, at sec, S-E-C, dot gov, G-O-G, uh, G-O-V, sorry, dot G-H. Or you call 0800 Six five. It's zero eight zero zero one zero 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 six five, and then your concerns will be responded to. Um, I have seen very active engagement on the SEG platform, so I'm very certain on that. Um, let's begin with you, sir. Atu. Yes, sir. So you may want to straighten that mic, and then you tell us your name, and your question follows. Or from Kwame Anderson, uh, I want to ask something about legacy fund management. Um, but then maybe, sir, I mean, in the one license has been commuted. Uh, uh, meaning that they have been commuted for almost one year now. 
But then, Mrs. So what happens to our fans? Because since last year, or how back at what I know I sent message you, you would just give me a which is going to be a she. One line is in there from one on call. Then, but then, Mr. B also there saying, case, not say condition is not more, so we fail her. What happens to our fans? Thank you. Thank you very much. On the basis of uh, judges can fall sick, uh, my big brother was trying to ask, uh, answer a question. He said, judges can fall sick. I see if he was a fan. What's his name? I want to find out when will the liquidation orders be granted? Uh, because yeah. we have heard the resident general has been going to court. Am I clear? Go ahead with your question, sir. The question is, we have heard the Registrar General or SEC has been going to court regards to Brackfield. That is well so, noted. Yes. So if you are done, thank you. So you may want to tell us your name before you take your seat. Daniel, thank you. Hello. Good evening. I'm Richard uh, from Thakali here. My questions are two. One, I would like to ask... When we were giving the presentation, you talked about the commodities market, the localized commodities markets now in Ghana here. I want to ask what are some of the commodities that we have on the localized commodities market. Then also, I would like to know for academic research purposes, if you want information on some of the companies or some of the institutions under your mandate, are we able to get some of these information for academic research purposes? Thank you. Daniel, Thank you. your concern is a research topic. You, we. We possibly have to do a lot of reading, but thank you. Um, we'll do it quite brief, and then other concerns, we can identify that on the platform. Yes, sir. All right. My name is Godwin Slonimpa from Cape Coast. I would like to find out what is the basis for the payment plan that has been given us. Uh, in terms of those who are above 60 years, you are paying 100%, faith-based organizations 100%, all other claimants, 20%. I, I ought to know, is it that the state doesn't have money to make full payments, or is the state legally stopped from making full payment to everybody, or what's the basis for that? Because I believe that, um, all right, so. Your question okay. is well Thank noted, you. sir. Good evening. I'm Robert Yeji. My uh, clarification. If my investment, the 20 percent that will be paid, is greater than the 70,000, which one will I get? Two. The balance in the balance that will be going to tier two. How will I assess it, and how, when will I assess it? Because we mentioned tier two but not detailed uh, information was given. So we want information on the tier two. Thank you. We will take the final three here. Yes, um, good evening. Good. My name is Ekuya Mobuateng, and uh, uh, from the presentation from the Director General, uh, he was kind of saying that uh, this insurance company is not under SEC, that insurance company is not under SEC. Um, with humble request, I would want to know uh, the insurance company under SEC and uh, also the insurance company under BOG so that uh, um, I can be able to uh, invest, you know, at and when the need arises. And also, um, I just had a message from my mother to ask uh, about the, the Gold Coast, um, how far with the Gold Coast, um, you know, issues um, going. And um, when um, our able uh, uh, honorable uh, minister was speaking, he made emphasis on, on, on the private sector, as in Takradi, secondly Takradi, um, helping the private sector. I am, I am a, you know, I'm a farmer, okay, deals in rice, local rice, brown rice. So, uh, can you help me how to, how to get um, at least funds to push my business. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Kuamuabuateng. Thank you, from Leon Atie. My question is, I'm going to ask you, Mr. Kakram, 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 Mr. K
with the presentation of uh, SEC benchmark now our raise fund for businesses. And I'm very busy at it. One now one and one of you are there or qualified there. The fund or benchmark get to SEC now which thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. Good evening. Okay, so my question goes to I think, Madam Lady, uh, the Deputy Madam. Actually, during the class uh, meetings that we had with the Register General, uh, it was stated that uh, for the companies who have had their uh, court orders granted and all that, their tier two. So that uh, GCB Capital or AM Fund will provide details or reports on the tier two at every anniversary date. They stated at every anniversary date. I want a clarity. When is the anniversary date? Is it when you are done with the onboarding or when you receive your first tier payment? Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. We gave opportunity to the last. Sincere apologies. Please go on the online platform. Director. Great, but before Director begins to take the question, I want to add one from Facebook. Isaac Adams says that pensioners, schools and institutions are getting 100% of their investment. What about persons with disability? That's what he wants to know. Um, so, Jacob, um, the question on the capital raising, uh, there are two, so you can take uh, both and you can do it in fancy. Uh, one was raising capital for farming, and then who qualifies to, um, to raise money. So if you can box that up and deal with it. So Deborah, they gave you your, your question. So uh, you, answer, uh, you answered that. Um, so Daniel Asma, okay, no, Kwamina Anderson, you talked about legacy again. I think we already talked about uh, legacy and from what you are saying you are not reaching them and then the payment uh, payment plans the promise is not being kept uh, to so put in your complaint uh, it will be additional information uh, for us uh, what happens if they um, are not able to solve their issues um, your guess is as good as mine um, we have said that we have given conditions. If the conditions are not fulfilled, we will know what we have to do. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll cross the bridge when we get there. Uh, but my information is that they are making uh, some uh, efforts. Uh, my information that they also have some monies locked up that they are trying to uh, retrieve and so on and so forth. But let's wait for... Uh, you know, to get to that point. But if you are having issues, do submit complaints. We also had some uh, clients who have informed us that they've got payment from legacy. So it's, it's, it's a question of maybe how they are managing the process. But please feel free to submit a complaint uh, to us. And then there was a question, Daniel Asma. I think, Carlos, you had wanted to uh, uh, come in on, on that. Um, we can't tell you when the liquidation orders will be given or granted because it's a, it's a court process. Um, wh wherever you heard that uh, the, the uh, SEC or uh, the official liquidator is not in court, um, <laughs> I don't know where you heard it from, but it's totally uh, inaccurate. Uh, the SEC when it comes to liquidation order, what we did was to write to the, liquidation, to the official liquidator to go to court. I, as the DG, for instance, I don't have to go to uh, court because the official liquidator is, in, is the one who is taking the petition to court. Secondly, the official liquidator engages lawyers that, you know, so, it, so uh, people say all kinds of things, uh, but I can tell you that it's not true the case is still in court. I think somebody also said, the mother asked that uh, how far with the uh, Gold Coast issue. The liquidation petition is still before the court. So it's subject to the court processes and when it will be granted. I don't know whether you want to add anything or, or you're okay. 
Okay, so, so, so that's on the uh, question on the uh, liquidation order. Um, yeah, the researcher. Uh, we, we get requests uh, from time to time from people who are doing uh, research for assistance. And when we get it, depending on the nature of information, our policy and research uh, team uh, may be able to help or can point you in the direction to get the information for, for your research. So that's that. And then 20% or 70,000, the formula was the higher of the two. So if the 20% is more than 70,000, you get 20% of your claim in the tier uh, in the tier one. Um, I think Deborah, you want to you, you answer uh, on the anniversary since they mentioned your name uh, with 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 that. And then somebody also asked the basis for the formula. Uh, please, you have to understand that the bailout is actually a government social intervention. Uh, if, if, you, if you remember, when I made my few remarks at the beginning, I, I mentioned the element of personal responsibility. It, it's important for all of us to know that we should be responsible for the, um, the decisions that we make. And when it comes to investment, there's a trade-off between risk and return. When you go in for high return, you have to know that high return will go with high risk. So if it doesn't go well, then you are aware that you went in for a high return investment. You know, so if it doesn't go well, um, you know, then the question is, did you know or you didn't know? That's a, that's a different matter. But the fundamental thing is that take responsibility. Understand. I think one of the presenters said, if you don't understand something, uh, stay uh, away from it. But the bailout is a government social intervention. Okay, Th that's what I want you to understand. And as part of the formula, the decision was made that for pensioners or those who are 60 and above, uh, given the fact that they are not getting regular income and all of that, uh, they should have um, access to liquidity, you know, so um, they had 100% of their claims in the, the tier one. Uh, if you look at the, the other entities that enjoyed 100%, uh, these are entities that have a number of people behind them. We talk about the education institution, the hospitals and all of that. They, they have a number of people behind them, you know, so it was all part of the the, the, the considerations uh, for that. Now, government must always look at what it can afford, especially when it's doing a bailout. Can I afford to pay all the uh, cash upfront? Or I want to give part upfront as a bailout, and then the part, you, you still have your money, but then you can access it after a certain period. You know, so that's what brought about the tier one and then the tier two. So you have a certain portion immediately. Uh, and then, the, because in any case, it's, a, it's an investment. You know, that, that's the, the thing that it was an investment that you uh, embarked on. It's not like money that you're going to use or spend immediately. So if it's an investment, let it be, let part be in an investment vehicle. But for those, especially the pensioners who may have higher uh, liquidity needs, give them access to all their funds because they may not be getting regular income. Okay, so there were a number of considerations. We can't, or the government couldn't have considered all the different, um, you know, permutations, you know. So let's accept that this was a social intervention and, um, you know, let's take it for uh, what it is. At least you're not losing your money in a sense. Just that you're getting parts immediately and then um, the remainder in tier, um, the tier two. That has some rules on how you can access it. So I think that's what uh, I can say. So Deborah, you can come and then um, do the... So just to tell you that up on the screen is the anniversary date discussion that people have asked for. So. 
And then the pension too, you should have been 60 by December 2020. If you are 60 after December 2020, you don't qualify for the full amount. So these are the anniversary dates. The October 2020 group, your first anniversary is October 2021. The January 2021 group, your first anniversary is January 2022. The March 2021 group, October 2022. July 2021 is October 2022. And the September 2021, who just had their class meetings last week, your anniversary date will be determined. But you get a text message from GCB Capital when your anniversary date is up. They'll send you a text message with the amount that is due you at that anniversary date. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Edu. Briefly. But to offer, offer fundraising, you know, now you can there, or your companies that will raise the funds for capital market. In T, but from then, you were Ghana National Chamber of Commerce, regional branch, or Takradeha, Fao Hong Kobo Hong Hong. Now, sir, we in Padua, I want to sign for him, you, you have a buying one, a bedding kitten home separately. Now, baby, and Tasse, no, and the Chibiano, why you're fine. And see, go out, look for Ghana National Chamber of Commerce in Takrade. Register with them, they will invite us, we'll come and have a more detailed engagement with them. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Edo. And people, please, we are just done. We are done, so kindly stay, um, because our Honorable Regional Minister, together with Nana, have stayed with us throughout. And um, we're just taking final thoughts. So in less than five minutes, we'll check out of this place. We'll call our chairman, our distinguished chairman, to give his closing remarks. Nana Kobnan Ketia, the fifth. Um, I think we've stayed short enough because there were a lot of questions that were going to be asked. But it's been quite a historic evening. The first time the SEC steps out of Ghana, it comes to Security Tekrade. <laughs> Accra is Ghana. We are in the provinces. So we hope that the visit becomes more often and the investor education continues. Because obviously, a lot of us are still in the woods over there happening. The questions have been quite interesting. As we were sitting here talking, I was taking my head to him and we we're discussing Maddox and Enron and so on that you heard about. And the whole idea of confidence, but at the same time, too, we also know that confidence shot into the con men who come into the system. And the risk we take whenever we go into forms of investment and the personal responsibility. I lost money and I thought it had gone into the sea, but I was surprised that I got some money back. And what I mean by I was surprised that I got some money back, I remember that uh, the gentleman who came to Ghana to preach that institutions, we need to build our institutions. I have my disagreement with him though, um, that's Obama came in here and talked about institutions. Now, uh, we must have institutions that work. And institutions are made up of human beings. They just don't exist. So the integrity, the integrity, the character of the human beings are always very, 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 very important. Now, for those, who are, those of us, in quotes, who may have been conned, the court processes must be fast-tracked because they must also be penalized. Then it becomes a way of seeing that, oh, this action cannot continue. They cannot be allowed to go scot-free. See, this is part of confidence building in here. All of us here, almost every question that I've asked, looking at faces, we want to believe in Ghana. We want to have faith in this country. But our laws must be laws that belong to us and to be seen to be working. That's right and so on and so forth. Uh, I could go on and on. They talked about digitalization. As soon as they said it, then my, my mind went to, the antenna went to cybersecurity and what is happening. Someone raised the question about supervision. There must be supervision. This, this particular thing, the watchdog, the sentinels cannot sleep. 
So if you have, you need to have men. Get them. And then uh, the, yesterday I discussed something that, look, some of these institutions need to be independent of the word government. They are governance institutions. It doesn't necessarily mean that the executive has to be in control. So we should also look at some of these things. But we're building the country. And some of us might lose along the way. Some of us may gain. Those who lose, let them uh, lose positively. And those who gain, let them gain positively. Um, one, my mind went to the last thing that came into my head, um, the character. Oh, please, I, lest I forget, give a big clap for the MCs. I think they've done extraordinarily well. I think most of the club went to the lady, so. <laughs> but to end it, my mind went to a quote by Frederick Douglass. He says, when a slave becomes a happy slave, he has, he has effectively relinquished all that makes him human. Sitting here, I realize that you don't want to be happy slaves. Right. You want to be free guardians. Right. Thank you for coming. And you know already, any time you have an encounter with Nanakop Nanketia, you leave with some food for thought. Let's put our hands together one more time. And so we take a few more final thoughts before we leave, but just so you're more relaxed, uh, SEC has thought about you, and so we have provided buses to convey us, those of us going to the Secondary Road, those of us going to Apremado, Apawan, there is a bus for you. And those of you going to the Kojokom Road, there are buses for you, so don't be in a hurry at all to leave. In any case, we'll be leaving very soon. All right, so guys, let's take another final thought from the Director General of SEC, put their hands together, let's receive Reverend Daniel Obami Tete. Right, I'm not gonna make any uh, remark. I just want to give the vote of thanks. So uh, Matilda, whoever has been lying to give the <laughs> vote of thanks, when you come, just pray and then uh, close. <laughs> I want to personally thank the Honorable um, Regional Minister, Honorable Kabuna Ochebako Mesa, because he, he has come and he has stayed throughout. Yeah. It's, it's, it's remarkable. Please, let's, let's give another round of applause. And also to give special thanks to our chairman and the chairman. Again, he has spent the whole day and I am aware that yesterday uh, he was here in Takwadi but I had to go to Accra uh, today but came back because of this program and the words of wisdom Nana Chairman we thank you so so much yeah. and then for everyone the Western Regional Committee who um, um, gave us, you know, support. Um, our uh, peer regulators, NPRA, uh, NIC, uh, BOG, who are here supporting us, uh, GCB Capital. Uh, thank you for coming to support. And of course, for the SEC team, thank you so much. But for all of you, it's been wonderful having you. And let me say that if we're unable to answer all your questions, let this event let you know that we are available, we are accessible. So you can reach us um, you know, on uh, our website and through our various uh, social media handles. And if we didn't answer your questions to your satisfaction, we will come again. But thank you for your reception. Thank you for staying. And let's together uh, build our nation Ghana. A big thank you to our hosts, uh, MCs, for a good job done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, these, these are the announcements. Um, we, we prepared something for you. Supper. Um, so, pick it up before you go. We, we, don't, we don't want you to waste it. Yes, food. I mean to say food. Um, but if we can have the toll-free number on, on the screen, it will be good for people because 
a number of the audience would want to engage with the SEC even after here. It's info at sec.gov.gh. Um, and the number is 0800-100065. Please let's take notice of that. And then um, before Matilda comes to pray, would you kindly stay? Because we would want to give the, the Honorable Chair and the Regional Minister the honor. Let's allow them to leave. And then we can pick our snack or dinner and then we go home. Thank you. Matilda Gosa. They won't both say mama till the end. Thank you. Um, Ebenezer, this is how far God has brought sake. Shall we pray? Eradi and Aji Yadawasi. In Yanko Pon Yadawasi of Pensua, Odi Abedro. Eradi Yadi. A study is here, she said, programming. A year who on our day and start here. Now, Odi Abba, a year pa. That was it, and you may be a free by and when you uncle for Fanny Codru as some dream. So I did think Nasa Coco Bonwa, a day a year in us here, Amma Woodin. That was it, one year away. That was it. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Matilda. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how we wrap it up tonight with the first edition of Time with SEC here in the Western region. Let's remain seated as our dignitaries take leave of us. Hopefully we get to meet again soon. My name is Zato Kwame Rotu, and I did this with my colleague, the very beautiful Mary Ama Bawa. Kindly remain seated. All right, so the dignitaries will take a quick picture before they take leave of us. Respectfully, let's remain seated while that happens.